Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T Viewers TV. Well, welcome into Globe Life Park in Arlington. Proud filing in tonight on Pudge Rodriguez Gold Glove Bobblehead Night. Everybody uh, getting the great collectible, and the Rangers hope to collect a win tonight in Game Two of this four-game set as they take on the Tampa Bay Rays. And welcome along, everyone, with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us on this Tuesday night of Rangers baseball. Rangers trying to get back into the uh, winning ways that they had uh, Sunday down in Houston. And tonight, they're going to rely on a guy that's really coming along well as a starting pitcher, and that would be 25-year-old right-hander Nick Tepich. You know, you're right, Buzz. And with, with any young pitcher, what they're looking for is consistency. And Nick has had two pretty good starts. I guess you can't quite call that consistency yet. But it's a good step in the right direction. His last two starts have gone well. His last start was five and two-thirds scoreless innings at Chicago. He's pitched very well at night. He's pitched well at home. So this is a night game at home. He's coming off two good starts. Hopefully the consistency is starting. We'll get another good one tonight. Well, and this could be one of those games, too, that uh, Nick Tepes reaches back for some good feelings he had when he faced Tampa Bay in his major league debut had an outstanding ball game. So Nick, uh, on the hill tonight, he'll be joined by the rest of the Rangers as they look for a W this evening, taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. We'll have the starting lineup in the first pitch right after this. Brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. The Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event. Now playing at a Ford dealer near you. By AT&T U-Burst TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. And by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. A very comfortable 
August evening here at Globe Live Park in Arlington. Breeze blowing out to right field before we get underway. Let's head down to the field and say hello to Emily Jones. Em? Well, as you and Tom talked about a little bit earlier, Nick Tepish searching for that consistency that has eluded him so far, starting to see some signs of it. And Nick says, really, it's a matter of making the big picture much smaller. You know, really, for me, it's just not so much game by game. That I try to go inning by inning, you know, break it down even more like that. But, um, you know, I, I feel like if you can do that, then... Um, you know, it's going to make it a lot easier on yourself mentally, and you're not worried about what's happened or what's going to happen. It's worried about what's happening right now. And, Buzz, we always hear guys talk about trusting their stuff, especially when they're young. And for Nicky says it's a matter of that stuff working here and there to give him that success, uh, to give him that confidence to trust that stuff that he knows he has. And it says it starts with commanding the fastball, which we hear, of course, so much, Buzz. Yeah, you're right, Em. It's uh, not much new to, to uh, reveal. That's uh, very basic, but it's true for everybody. Uh, Nick Teppi trying to take that thought out there this evening. And here's the uh, Tampa Bay Ray lineup that he will face tonight. Desmond Jennings leads off. Ben Zobra is back second. Matt Joyce is in left field hitting third. Evan Longoria is the cleanup man. James Loney at first. Been a hot heater since the All-Star break. John Rodriguez DHs. Logan Forsythe, the start at second. Jose Molina behind the plate. And Kevin Kiermaier back in the lineup. He's batting ninth, playing right field in the first pitch. To Desmond Jennings is outside for ball one. Jennings, a 242 average. And he goes after the uh, 1 0 pitch and skies to shallow left center. Leonis Martin handles it. That is out number one. We'll check out the Sonic scouting report for Nick Tepish. 14 games, 13 starts this year, 446 ERA. Mentioned that he's pitched better at home than he has on the road, about a point better. Three total walks allowed in his last four starts. That's good to see over 22 innings. And the other interesting factoid, his ERA at night is almost four runs better than it is during the day. So he likes to pitch at home. He likes to pitch at night. He's got that going for him. And he's got two good starts under his belt coming into this ball game tonight. So things are pointed in the right direction for Nick. Hopefully he'll be... Very good tonight and have a nice nice ball game against the Rays. And facing a very hot Ben Zobrist, he throws strike one. Zobrist, 0 for 3 in his career against uh, Nick Tepish. Pretty good moving fastball there. And Zobrist down on the count now. No balls, two strikes. Zobrist, the switch hitter, much better from the left side. 287 overall, as you saw, with nine home runs, 34 driven in. 0-2. Now, so far, Tepish has uh, been able to get the fastball on both sides of the plate. And we talk about fastball command, and that's uh, one pretty telltale sign if you're able to get it going to both sides of the plate effectively. And Nick so far has done that. Another 0-2 pitch. Got him swinging. Went up the ladder at 92, and uh, Zobrist becomes a strikeout victim, number one for Tepish. And we'll take a look at the uh, Rangers defense as delivered to you tonight by Break Jack. Outfield this evening, Aducey, Martin, and Chu, left, center, and right. Mike Karp has started first. Odor and Andrews up the middle. Beltre at third. Giovanni Soto back behind the plate this evening. And he is working with the 25 year old right hander, Nick Teppi. Well, very quickly on six pitches, Teppi has a fly ball and a strikeout. Two gone. Matt Joyce, the first pitch outside. One ball, no strikes. Joyce, a 280 average with seven home runs and 46 RBI. I mentioned uh, Nick Tepish and his uh, major league debut against these Rays. That's the only time that he has faced them in his career. That was uh, a year ago, April. April the 9th of 2013. Nick worked seven and a third in that ball game and allowed just one run on four hits. One one pitch, a little topper foul, and Tepish uh, doing a good job of getting ahead here in the first inning. Hey, making some good pitches, good velocity, 92 miles an hour, great movement on his sinker, threw a cut fastball or a hard slider that 
Joyce swung over. And you're talking in Zobrist, one of the hottest hitters in the league. And Joyce, guy with almost a 40% on base percentage against right handed pitching. Two and two now. Two tough guys to pitch to. Mm -hmm. Soto with the signs. And Tepish picks one out. Got him swinging. Big hook. And back to back strikeouts. A one, two, three impressive inning for Nick Tepish. Rays are gone. Rangers coming up in a scoreless game. Coming to bat now and take a look at the Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers batting order. Ron Washington has Shinsu Chu leading off, playing in right field. Elvis Andrews is next followed by the first baseman, Mike Cart. Adrian Beltre bats clean up. Jim Aducey is in left. Dave Pierre and Sebia, the DH this evening. Leonis Martin in center. Giovanni Soto bats eight and catches. And the second baseman, Rukden Odor, bats ninth. Sonic scouting report for Jeremy Hellickson. He's had four starts. Spent a lot of time on the disabled list. His last start was his best start. Against the Rangers, four career starts. They've not gone well for him. 0-3 with a 5-0-3 ERA. Interesting stat right here. He is the oldest pitcher in the Rays rotation. 27 years, 126 days. And it was just a couple of years ago, 2011, he was the rookie of the year. And here he is, a couple of a few years later, the oldest pitcher in their starting rotation. Yeah, he's an old feller. <laughs> 27. Wow. Now he has uh, not beaten the Rangers in his career, and the Rangers would love to keep him winless. First pitch to Shinsu Chu is in for strike one. Chu at 245 for the year. He has had pretty good numbers against Ellickson and against the Rays for that matter. Three for eight with a home run is true. Pretty good breaking ball and nothing in two the count. Mentioned that Ellickson's last start was his best start. He went seven innings in that start. Didn't walk a batter. Two hits and only one run. Joe Madden said that looked like the Jeremy Ellickson that won the Rookie of the Year award. He was very pleased with the way he went about it in his last start against the tough Oakland A's. Out of play, still 0-2. In the uh, upper reaches of left field, our RF camera roaming around the ballpark, giving you different views. Like the fans see in different areas of the ballpark. That's a, a great look from out there. Low and outside, one ball, two strikes. Very comfortable evening, as we mentioned. 90 degrees at first pitch here tonight. A, a breeze drifting out toward right field. So out of the north tonight. Low humidity. Great night here at the ballpark. 1-2 pitch from Hellickson. Two balls, two strikes.
Ellickson coming back from uh, some off-season elbow surgery. Had some arthroscopic surgery on his pitching arm. To left field, down the line. That is slicing and just out of the reach. Well, the left fielder, Matt Joyce. Ellickson missed a spring training. He started having problems during the, during the start of his throwing program in December. And eventually had uh, the surgery performed. Kept him uh, out of the lineup until just about uh, three weeks ago. Now the 2-2. Two, two. two to right field. Moving to his left. Kiermaier makes the catch. And Chu, a hard and out, one gone. Number one, Elvis Harris. Let's take a look at the uh, Rays defense brought to you by Progressive tonight. You saw Kevin Kiermaier in right field making that catch on the uh, Chu line drive. Jennings in center, Joyce is in left. Infield, Maloney, four sides at second, Zobris the shortstop. Longoria at third, and Jose Molina, the veteran catcher, back behind the plate. We have two of the three Molina brothers in, in the house tonight. Benji, of course, coaching first base for the Rangers. Here's Elvis, a 272 average. Makes a strike on the inside corner. Elvis, a couple of home runs, 32 driven in. Ellickson, one of the few guys on the race staff that uh, Elvis has not hit well against. One ball and one strike. Now, Hellickson came into the 2014 season with a lifetime record of 39 and 31 and a 370 ERA. He's had three full seasons plus a small part of another year. His best year was his rookie year. He was the rookie of the year, 2011. That year he went 13 and 10 with a 295 ERA. Last year was not a good year for him. He had 30 starts. He was in the rotation all year long. But his ERA ballooned up to 517. Might have been because of some of the arm problems, which would lead to his surgery. Mm -hmm. Ellickson, an abbreviated windup, the 2 1 pitch. Hit hard by Longoria into left field. Over to cut the ball off is Joyce, and holding on with a solid single to left is Elvis Andrews. Uh, that was just too hot to handle. That was a smash by Elvis Longoria. He's a very good defensive player at third base. Uh, he did not have a whole lot of time to react to this ball. The ball is an inside part of the plate, but Elvis does a great job of keeping his hands in, turning on the ball, hitting it with no vibration on the back in the left field. Just went underneath the glove of Longoria. Well, the first base runner of the night for either ball club. Elvis with a one out single. Now Mike Carp will step in. Carp hitting at 194 overall. And as a Ranger, he is one for seven since coming over. He's acquired uh, on a waiver claim from the uh, Red Sox by the Rangers. First pitch to him is outside and low for ball one. That claim was put in on the uh, 3rd of August. This is the ninth day that uh, Mike has been a member of the ball club. Had a pinch hit single uh, on Friday night. That snapped an 0 for 13 that he had been mired in. Six ball games overall with the Rangers. Carp missed a little bit of time. Had a pulled uh, groin muscle on the uh, right side that kept him out for a couple of ball games. Two balls and no strikes. All teams go through injuries. Everyone knows the injuries that the Rangers have had. The Rays have had some problems in their starting rotation as well. You mentioned that Hellickson had arm problems, had surgery, went on the disabled list right before the season started. A week later, their fine young left-hander Matt Moore was out for the year, and a week after that, Alex Cobb, young right-hander, went on the disabled list with an oblique strain. So they, they've also had significant problems with their rotation, staying healthy. That ball hit hard to right, coming on very quickly. Kiermaier 
unloads a throw in a hurry. But Elvis able to get back just in, in front of it. Boy, a great break by Kevin Kiermaier, the right fielder. That ball was hit on the nose and he's sinking a little bit. Uh, Kiermaier is charging in to make the play. Well, all three batters have hit the ball hard. Chu hit his ball hard to right field. Elvis ripped his single to left field. And the hardest of all three was that ball that Carp hit. Nice play by Kiermaier, who made a nice throw, throwing on the run, too. Got unloaded that ball quickly and accurately to first base. Elvis had to get back there as fast as he could, or he would have been doubled off. Well, two outs. Here's Adrian Beltre. Elvis at first. We'll see if he uh, decides to try and take off for second. Beltre takes the first pitch in for strike one. Adrian at 321 with the average 17 home runs and 62 driven in. He is two for six lifetime against Jeremy Hellickson. Infield into that overship, much as we saw the Astros do against Adrian Beltre. Three players on the left side of the infield. Adrian, of course, very adept at driving the ball to right. If he gets a pitch, he can do that with. Like that. That's when he was trying to trying to do that and fouled it off to the right. Ellickson's thrown a number of pitches in that danger zone for a pitcher. It's come out okay because two line shots have been caught. And after that last swing, now the Rays have gone out of that extreme overshift. They have moved uh, Forsyth, the second baseman, back on the first base side of second. And Beltre toward the gap in left center. Moving to his left is Joyce. And Matt Joyce hauls it in. That'll do it. Rangers get a hit. But Strander runner. We played one at Globe Line Park. The Rangers nothing and the Rays nothing. Forces serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. Welcome to all of you and thank you very much for your service. Now Nick Tepish back to the hill for the top of the second inning. And a very quick and easy one, two, three first. Dealing to Evan Longoria. And the uh, fastball to the outside corner very quickly, nothing in two. Yeah, I'd have to say that that first inning was one of Nick's best innings of the year. Yeah. When you consider Zobrist and Joyce, left hand hitters have been extremely hot. He just overmatched them with strikeouts. Tried the breaking ball to Longoria. It's one ball and two strikes.
Longoria, a 250 hitter with 14 home runs. And he jams one to right center field. Plenty of time for Leonis Martin to move over. That is out number one. And before uh, James Loney steps in, let's say hello to Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Buzz, check out this little Ranger fan. What's her name? Hi, Annabelle. Three and a half months, all decked out in a Ranger outfit. Very nice. Community Corner tonight, the Texas Rangers hosting eight softball teams that are participating in Major League Baseball's World Series. Actually, the girls had a great day here at the Hall of Fame, and then they had a nice lunch in there, and they begin play over in South Lake. Championship game, Buzz, will be at the Texas Women's University. That's going on this week, Buzz. All right, Noxie, thank you. First ball swinging. James Loney rolls one out to second. And there are two outs just like that. So Nick Tepish, to say economical, I think would be a vast understatement so far. Yeah, it's economical. And they haven't even approached hitting the ball hard yet. And that's what happens. You know, you, you, there's no doubt that Nick has the stuff to be a very solid major league pitcher. And when you see a glimpse of five straight batters, the command of his fastball, the movement on his fastball, the hard slider, and the slow curveball that he's thrown. You get pretty excited about what you see in those sure. five batters. Sean Rodriguez, the first pitch to him is high for ball one. And then it's pretty obvious what distinguishes successful pitchers over time is the ability to use the stuff that you have consistently, game after game, inning after inning. That's the hard part. For the most part, you can't get to the big leagues if you don't have good stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's a given. Some is much, some people, some pitchers are better than others. But everybody's got the ability. And the one that distinguishes the thing that distinguishes the great ones, can you take your good stuff out there more often than not? Well, that a play. And I also think, Tom, there's another facet of that is how can you or can you pitch and win when you don't have your best stuff? Sure. You know, and I think that's what percentage like, of the if you have 30 starts, how many starts do you think you don't have what you would consider really good stuff? Probably half of them. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to have two game plans, one to go after them with your best stuff and the other one when you don't. Yeah, you have to have that confidence that you can pitch without. The, that way you don't really worry about what kind of stuff you have. Jew, the ball off of his glove, and it's off the side wall. So safely at second base is Sean Rodriguez. Well, Jew had a long way to run, but got there in plenty of time. And just as he was getting ready to cross the line into foul territory, the ball uh, went off the tip of his glove. Tom, that might have been one of those cases you talked about. The guy's eyes bouncing around in his head a bit. Yeah, when you know anyone that's played baseball and you've had to run a long way for a ball, as you run and your feet hit the ground, your eyes move a little bit, your head bobs, and that causes the ball to do the same thing. And you hope as you get close to the ball, you can kind of smooth out your stride and let that disappear and catch the ball. And you know, Chu sees the ball. He looks to see where the wall is. He's underneath it. I think he was a little bit intimidated by the wall. He got to the ball. He saw the ball. It hit his glove. And at the same time, it was almost like he was bracing for the wall and didn't really go after it confidently, knowing that he was going to catch it. Well, that's going to be an error, a two-base error on Chu. The Rodriguez at second base. Two outs. Logan Forsyth, the second baseman now, will face Tepish. Well, the Rangers... That is the uh, 79th error committed by Texas this year. And the first pitch to Forsyth is on the outside corner. A slider from Tepic, strike one. Rangers, by the way, with that uh, fielding percentage next to last in the American League. Only Cleveland with uh, more errors and a lower fielding percentage. 0-1 pitch. Catches the inside corner. The Forsyth very quickly down on the count. No balls and two strikes. 246, the average for Forsyth. He's in an 0 for 11 streak. And Nick Tepe trying to keep that 0 for going. Jammed that inside on him and uh, fouled off. Still 0 and 2. And Tepe uh, has 12 pitches in this inning and 11 in the first inning. And he is nowhere near. Using a lot of pitches to work. We've got Rodriguez at second after the error. 
Depish that high set. And out of play to the right. Nick on a pretty good roll here at home. He's, uh, as Tom told you, the, the numbers here at home, ERA and accompanying numbers, much better than they are on the road. Elvis takes care of that ground ball, and that will do it. Well, the two base error, no problem. Definitely should have worked around that. Blaze strand a runner after one and a half. We are scoreless in our league. Introduced to the crowd, he was going to join us in a couple of innings up here in the booth. And Punch Rodriguez uh, going down and saying hi to Kenny. And Kenny Otter tonight uh, introduced as part of the 20 year celebration here in Arlington. Of course, 20 years ago in July, Kenny Rogers, the perfect game against the Angels in this ballpark. Uh, and as a matter of fact, that's the last no hitter that has been thrown by a Ranger pitcher. So Kenny will be with us in the fourth inning. He and his family out to enjoying the, the ball game tonight, and well, that brings back some memories. Doesn't seem like it was 20 years ago. No, it sure doesn't. Nice to see Kenny out at the ballpark. Yeah. I haven't seen him out here very much. I have to talk him into coming out here more often. <laughs> no, Jim Adusi now to lead things off here in the Rangers' second scoreless ball game. A Ducey, a 217 average, a home run and seven driven in. Hellickson with the first pitch of inning number two. It's a slow breaking ball that bends in for strike one. See Jim in the last 10 ball games. Uh, been scuffling a bit since he came back off the disabled list. He hasn't been able to put his stroke together consistently, and Loney. Takes potential extra bases away from him here. A nice sliding stop. And Adusi is out number one. And six for the number seven. Folks, it's time for you to tweet your photo for a chance to have it shown on one of our upcoming broadcasts. And that's all thanks to the good folks at AT&T. Use hashtag Southwest Fan Photo, and your photo might be selected to be aired during one of our upcoming broadcasts. We'll have uh, tonight's selection a little bit later on in the ball game. Here's J.P. Aaron Sebia, Ranger designated hitter. J.P. a 181 average as Hellickson deals a strike to the inside corner. Eight home runs, 28 driven in. 
Aaron Sebia has had good success against Ellickson. Six for 22. One and one. JP in uh, his last five ball games, only one hit. That number would tell you one for 17, but you add one more game to that. In six games, he's had two home runs and driven in six. So it's kind of been feast or famine. This one's popped up, shallow right field. Kiermaier coming in. Two gone. And seven to center fielder, number two. Yeah, in that in that little stretch where JP hasn't been getting hits, he's probably got three or four balls. I know a couple of line drives to shortstop that he's hit pretty hard. Yeah. He hasn't had anything to show for it. Yeah, I can think of three line drives uh, just this last weekend yeah, that he had down there in Houston. Couple in Houston for, yeah. yeah, for sure. There's Leonis Martin. Another Ranger that uh, has fallen on hard times offensively. Leonis now down at 249. That's the lowest his average has been since you know, the first week of the season. And Ellickson dropping that breaking ball in. Ellickson has been able to do that. First pitch or second pitch, the guy's been able to get that slow breaking ball over, and that's a big weapon for him. Five home runs, 29 driven in. And another breaking ball over the back door. Nothing in two. Molina flashing the signs out as Martin waits. The other way, there's a base hit. Yeah, that, that's oh, a bat. Martin. I don't think we've seen that at bat all season long, where he takes two strikes calmly and then strokes a ball to left field. Yeah. Well, that, that has to be the name of the game. Play. Not taking two strikes, but being able to do that. Being able to hit the outside pitch where it's pitched to left field. He, He's been so anxious and trying so hard that he he's trying to pull everything, maybe trying to hit home runs, extra base hits to right field. He's been over anxious on breaking balls. Well, that's a great at bat for him with two strikes to stroke the ball to left field. Yep. Very nice job. Yep. If he can hit the outside pitch the other way, just like that, then he's going to be making strides in the right direction. First pitch to Giovanni Soto is low and in for ball one. Soto, 278 for the year. No home runs, an RBI. Giovanni in his uh, third ball game since being reactivated from the disabled list. One for seven in the first two games. Martin with good base stealing ability at first. One and one. A shot from our wedgie cam down there in right field in that uh, corner of the lower home run porch. Give you an idea of exactly what that lead looks like. One and two now to Giovanni. Soto, you remember, came off the disabled list. Was activated and had gotten back into uh, the lineup, and then all of a sudden in New York, hurt himself running the bases. His fourth game back and had to go back on the disabled list. And finally, now back in uh, in good shape. Everything feels good for him. Pitch in the dirt, and Molina will not have a throw as Jonas Martin able to scamper to second on the wild pitch. Jose Molina. Look how you thought he had this one taken care of pretty easily. It went in his glove, it just didn't stay in his glove. Oh, now, Leonis Martin in scoring position. Two and two is the count to Soto. Got him swinging. So that'll do it as Erlickson is up to the task. Giovanni and the Rangers are gone. No runs to hit. And one left. We finish two. We are still scoreless.
Dallas ball game as we head to the top of the third inning. It'll be Jose Molina, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Desmond Jennings to face Nick Tepish. And we are fortunate to be joined by uh, Sharon Robinson from uh, Major League Baseball RBI program. Sharon, thank you very much for coming in, being with us. It's um, it's a pleasure to have you in. Of course, uh, Sharon, the uh, the daughter of uh, the great Jackie Robinson and Jackie's legacy in a lot of ways is tied in with the, the RBI program. And you certainly have become an ambassador for Major League Baseball and the RBI and, and also the uh, Breaking Barriers program. Yes. And I love how they've, they've all married together mm -hmm. so that we're, we're telling kids we want them to have baseball skills but also strong character. So you're, you're developing more than just baseball skills. Is what that you're is our plan. That is our hope. And, and we... When we meet these kids, we feel like we're being very successful at it. Sharon, we've, we've talked about the R RBI program and in our way tried to explain it, but maybe you could explain exactly what the RBI program is to our viewers. Yes, it was started over 20 years ago in Los Angeles as a way to um, bring urban kids back into the game of baseball. Mm -hmm. And so it started off there, and now we're in over 200 um, markets, uh, you know, all, uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. um, so what actually happens uh, here in Texas, and what's been happening over this past week, is the teams have played regional conferences and come down to um, the finalists, and then they play a series of games here, and then they have their own World Series. Oh. So they actually, the boys actually played their World Series right here um, uh, in this beautiful stadium um, on Gosh, I've forgotten what day we're on now. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was it Monday? Sure. Yes. It was. It was and yesterday. Now, the boys have, have been part of the RBI program right from the start. How about the girls? Have they always been a part of it, too? No. no. Started off with the boys, and they brought softball in, and I don't know what year that happened. But we uh, – and it was – and years ago, we actually did bring them together. And uh -huh. now we separate them so the boys come first and the right. girls come later. So but they're here now, the too, The girls right? arrived today. Oh, cool. <laughs> boys left last night. Boys. I guess those are our boys' chance. Yep. Boys from uh, being honored yesterday and the, and the girls uh, honored tonight prior oh. to the ballgame. Yes. And they uh, they start play, I believe it is tomorrow. That's, uh, they the do. do. Yeah. And they're honored in a couple of ways. Tonight we honored uh, some received scholarships from Major League Baseball. And then we also gave a laptop computer to the Breaking Barriers winner, the girl who wrote an essay about overcoming a, a barrier in her life. And she won for all of the, the various teams. So, oh, Tremendous. Now, how long has the Breaking Barriers program been This is our 18th year. 18th year. 18 oh, years. Goodness. We've been in, uh, we've reached over 22 million kids. It started off as a school-based program. Uh -huh. And then we incorporated it as part of the, break, as part of the RBI program. Um, so we've been in schools for 18 years and probably with RBI for about 15. And they are all, uh, both these programs, under the auspices of, of Major League Baseball? Absolutely. Yeah. Out of, they come out of the community department. Right. Uh, we're headed by Tom Braswell, who is uh, oh, great. a yeah. great leader for our, uh, for our department because we, we do a lot of projects. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, a, he works us hard. Now, how are your father's values related to the Breaking Barriers program? Because we give kids his values and his story as a strategy to overcome bar barriers in their own lives. So uh -huh. they, event they learn about different types of barriers, um, whether it's conceptual or physical, and then they have to apply it to their own lives, and then there's a national essay contest. So this year, for example, we received over 18,000 essays from kids all oh. over the country. They wrote about a barrier obstacle they've had to overcome, and then we narrow that down to 10 national winners, if you can imagine. And then I go out to the school along with, uh, and we bring them to a major league ballpark where they're honored. And at the school, there's an assembly, and they get a laptop computer and other prizes for their class. And then the grand prize winners come to the All-Star Game and also to the World Series. Very nice. Yes. Wow. Yeah, a little tapper back to the mound. That's going to be a very quick one, two, three inning. Well, Sharon Robinson, thank you so much for joining us. And it's been my pleasure. Thank you for the work you've done uh, with Major League Baseball. I've and loved every minute it. of it. Thank, right. you. <laughs> thank you. Your dad would be very proud of you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's right. We'll be back for the bottom of the third right after this in a score.
MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You get live look-ins and instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB TV game of the day, and a whole lot more. You can download at the App Store or visit TexasRangers.com today for more details. Wow. <laughs> now that, that is a meal right there. If that little guy polishes that off, boy, he's got an appetite. <laughs> The other little guy just wants the hot dog. He doesn't want the corn wrapped around it. <laughs> I'm going to turn into an offensive <laughs> lineman when he finishes that thing. <laughs> now, Rugden Odor trying to drop a butt down and bunts it foul for strike one. Rangers with the uh, only two hits of the game so far. A single in the first by Elvis and uh, Leonis Martin single in the second inning. Odor leading off the Ranger third. Rugnett at 254. Had the only extra base hit last night for the Rangers. Rangers held it just three hits by uh, Drew Smiley and company last night. Nothing in two. Well, Hellickson dropping that breaking ball right where he wants to at will here in the early going. And Rugnett and, and company having some problems. Odor with that six game hitting streak coming into play tonight. Ellickson has the sign, goes into the wind. Well, that's a good curveball he's throwing up yeah. there, boy. Good location with it, too. Ellickson has the dubious distinction of being the last year, the second slowest worker in Major League Baseball. He was taking 25 and a half seconds between pitches. The only one slower than that was David Price, who was on the same team with him. So it looks like he's speeding up a little bit compared to that last year. And Odor pops up the fastball. Foul territory, Longoria right at the rail and reaches in and can't quite get it. Back about a row and a half. Longoria able to cover the first row and that was it. That high enough so Longoria could get to the wall first and that's probably a good thing because that doesn't give too much that brick. No, that's, that's not a wall you want to run into very hard. That's kind of a sharp edge, and it's cement. So yeah. You'd be in tough shape if you ran into that thing. And Rudin Odor got one that stayed up for him and pounds it in the right. He has a seven-game hitting streak, and the Rangers have their leadoff man aboard for the first time tonight. Now that's probably a great example of fighting off some tough pitches. Working the count a little bit, waiting for a good pitch, and when you get it, hit it and take advantage of it. One good pitch to hit, he ripped it into right field. And there's the one to hit, yep. and he hit it hard. You see the other pitches all around the strike zone, nothing good to hit. But when he got his pitch to hit, he hit it. And that's kind of the key to every at bat for a hitter. Generally, you're going to get a pretty good pitch to hit in almost every at bat. Sometimes you don't, but the key is when you do get it to take advantage of it. Oh, Dord first. Here is Chu. Shinsu lined to right field in the first inning, and the Rays go into an overshift against Chu. Longoria, the only player left on the left side, and the hit and run was on, and Chu chopped it down foul. Oh, Dord sprinting towards second, looking back to home. He saw the pitch foul down, so he'll retrace his steps. That's a pretty good, I would think that's a pretty good defense if you want to deploy the hit and run, for the Rangers anyway, because uh, you know going into it where the hole is. You yeah, to, you don't have to wonder who's covering. Yeah. Well, that hole is ready made out there with that defense. If you can get a pitch that he can hit that way, the first and third pretty quickly. Ellickson taking something off there and he had two out in front. Nothing in two now. Didn't see you remember had that uh, four hit game down in uh, in Houston over the weekend. Collected his 1000th career hit and 100th hit of this season in that ball game. Now the 0-2 is coming from Hellickson. Got him swinging. 
Well, slow, slower, and slowest, and uh, Chu couldn't make the adjustment. That is strikeout number two for Helixson. And let's uh, go and talk to Jim Knox again about some RBI information. Jim? That's right, Buzz. With the eight softball teams the Rangers are hosting tonight that will participate in the Major League RBI World Series. Play begins tomorrow. This is Alyssa from Hilo, Hawaii. What does the RBI program mean to you, Alyssa? Um, to meet new people and to have fun. And what are you looking forward to most as play gets underway tomorrow? Um, to just have fun and play with our hearts. All right, there we go. And how are the folks in Hilo, Hawaii? I know a hurricane hit this past Thursday. How's everyone doing? Um, everybody's doing fine now. They're probably getting their electricity back now. But everybody's doing okay. Okay, well, enjoy your stay. And everybody, enjoy tonight's game, huh, girls? Come huh? Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> Nice going, Noxie. They're not quite sure about you yet. They haven't, haven't been around yet. I know what uh, what to do with Jim Knox. They feel, they'll, they'll figure it out. By the end of the ball game, they'll have to know exactly what to do. 0-1, the count to Elvis with Rudnett Odor at first. One out here in the third inning. And Ellickson hitting that inside corner. And Elvis uh, not real thrilled with Joe West, the home plate umpire, in that last call. Elvis, as you see, singled his first time up. And a solid base hit to left. He has Rugnet Odor at first after the leadoff single. One out in the Ranger third. And a snap throw over there, driving Odor back. Last eight games against the Rays. Elvis Andrews, a 387 hitter. In his career, he's hitting 315 against Tampa. 0 and 2 the count here. To the right side, up the ladder. Goes the second baseman Forsythe and doubles off Odor. Well, the 4 3 double play. Rangers are gone. They had a leadoff single, and nobody left. We're going to the fourth. Scoreless. By Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by the all new Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Now, fourth inning of uh, a pitcher's duel here at uh, Globe Live Park. And uh, what better way to bring in a guy that uh, knows us something about pitching? Kenny Rogers, the all time leading left handed winner in Ranger history, second all time overall. Good to see you, left-hander. It is great to be here, Buzz. How are you doing? <laughs> doing great. Good. Doing great. We don't see you out at the park enough, Kenny. You have to come out here more often. Well, I'm 
I kind of like staying under the radar. I know you guys know that about me. But uh, it's it's nice to be back. It, the park looks great, and um, you know it's it's fun to come back and relive some memories. Yeah, since uh, since the 28th of July, and I think you know what happened that day. But uh, since that day, we've seen the the replay of uh, of the last out. Oh, I don't know, probably half a dozen times, and it still doesn't seem like it was 20 years ago. But that that's as fresh in my memory uh, yeah. as if it happened yesterday. Well, it, I wish it would have happened yesterday, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, it, you know, it doesn't seem like 20 years, but, you know, my body and my, you know, my mind tell me it has been that long, yeah. which, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm kind of grateful for it, too, it, uh, <laughs> to have lasted that long. But it was uh, one of those special nights, no question. And got to see Pudge already uh, tonight and, you know, remember Rusty's dive and catch and all that stuff. So all those memories are great. And, you know, me playing here for so long, it's, uh, you know, it brings back a lot of them. Well, I, I would... Yes, it would. Kenny, uh, Anthony Andro brought us a, a Twitter question from Alan Young. He wanted to know, during your perfect game, was there a point in time where you said to yourself, I have a perfect game going? <laughs> no, that would have been taboo. Uh, <laughs> and the bench, when did you start to think about, know what you, what you had going on? You know, I've, I've told this to a lot of people over the years. Um, you know, I was, I was young, I think, at my career in being a starter, but... I know when my bullpen started um, that I was throwing and making pitches and uh, doing certain things. And there's one guy that's always stuck in my mind because when I started my bullpen to the end of it, there was somebody sitting up on that top right corner and watching every pitch I threw in the bullpen. When I threw a good one, he would like shake his head, yeah, that was good. And then <laughs> when I, yeah, and when he shook his, when I when I threw a bad one, his, he'd go like this, and I'm like, <laughs> I didn't have to watch the catcher. I just looked up to him to see what I did. But through that whole thing, I threw it, and then when it was over. I flipped the ball to him before the, you know, when the bullpen was over and he went to get it. And I guess it went over his head just barely and somebody else grabbed it behind him. And to this day, I have regretted that he didn't get that ball. Um, wow. Well, I hope he's watching and uh, knows who he is because he's got a ball coming uh, to him. No That's question. a great story. That yeah, is. But I didn't, I really didn't um, think about anything um, negative. And that's one thing that stood out too is there wasn't one incident where my thoughts were thinking about anything negative. Um, and that's not the norm for any pitcher. I think you always right. have demons out there. But yeah. for whatever reason this day, I never thought one second huh. about making a bad pitch, giving up a hit, doing anything wrong. Wow. I, I'm sure people have asked you about that, about that so-called zone. What you're describing is when you get in that zone, though, your, your mind doesn't wander at all, does it? I have no idea how I got there, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> but it just, it just happened. And I think um, when you're comfortable, when you're just feeling okay, uh, it just you just end up being there and if you try to get there it doesn't happen right and to his question earlier you know did I think about it no not until after the game was over and John Blake told me it was a perfect game because I didn't know it was well, at the you time. must have been in a zone I, I, I could have thrown another nine in it <laughs> but I got there I got in a perfect game I think against Cleveland a year a couple years later and knowing what I'd been through <laughs> you think I'd use some experience there well what I did was I thought, oh, I got a perfect game going. <laughs> and sure as all, within the next inning or two, I'd already given up a hit and a run. I was wow. like, it was it was in the seventh. I was perfect, I think, going in the eighth. And I thought to myself, I haven't given up a hit. I haven't given up a runner. The odds of no-hitter, perfect game, I think it's easier, you know, to get a no-hitter than a perfect game. So I threw a 3-2 breaking ball to Jim Tomey and walked him. Well, then I just messed it all up. <laughs> it's because I started thinking that I messed it up. <laughs> Well, you must have had a few pitching coaches along the way that said, don't think you're hurting the ball club, no, right? No question. <laughs> <laughs> Early on, a lot of them. You might have been one of them, no, too. No. <laughs> and it was, no, it was true, though. I, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know I was your first manager. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was very fortunate then. I told people that, too. I was like, I got in my first game because you felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, people also would have no idea that... You're, I guess what, 5'10", 140 pounds? Yep, 135 at the most, and 5'10", um, tops, and oof. Probably, <laughs> and you didn't pitch in high school, really? Nothing. No experience at all of pitching and very little baseball experience. But uh, like I told you before, the scout that signed me, Joe Marchese, the best scouting job I've ever heard in my life. It's got to be. <laughs> I was nothing. I was nothing for a few years as a pro, too. But No, no, that's not true. Now, if you hadn't been seen by Joe Marchese, Oof. your high school season ends. Oof. Is that your last your last baseball game? 
Oh. Or would you, like, you no wouldn't doubt. have gone to, gone to college to play, no, would you? No doubt. I was strawberry farmer's son, and um, that's whatever I would have started doing was farming, which I would have tried to get out of that as soon right. as I could because that was hard. <laughs> but, um, no, baseball would not have been in the uh, in my future in any way, shape, or form. So huh, I was just, extremely it's, fortunate. It's just an unbelievable story because yeah. Joe Marchese went to that game to see a player on the other team who turned yeah. out to be a number one draft choice. Yeah. And while he's at the game, he picks you out. <laughs> now, most scouts zero in on the best player, don't notice the rest of the team. He not only noticed someone else, he noticed someone that really wasn't even a prospect. It wasn't noticeable. That's unbelievable. There was 20 scouts there, and I know the guy's name, Stanley Bodrick, and it was for a Robinson High School, and he was he was a Bo Jackson clone. I mean, abs, as absolutely athletic and a beast among young kids at high school. And they were all there to watch him do whatever he did, and Joe just was one of them that didn't have blinders on to that kid, and I'll be forever grateful. For yeah. No question. Well, a lot of folks are grateful for that, too. A lot of folks <laughs> in the Ranger organization, I know that. Well, that's, that's great. That's uh, that's one of those stories that you say, no, nah, you're making that up. Now, that's <laughs> There's a lot of twists and turns in my story that are unbelievable, no question. And, and then you look, well, down the road a little bit after that uh, scouting job and all everything that transpired in between, and all of a sudden, three years ago, it's Kenny Rogers as part of the Texas Rangers Baseball Hall of Fame with those credentials. You know, you know, when you think of where you came from <laughs> and where you ended up, yes. there can't be two or three players in the history of baseball that started and ended in a wider ver with a wider variance than you did. <laughs> I don't think I don't know who it be. could be. Well, I've told you, you can't start any. If you want to say greener or if you want to say lower on the scale of experience <laughs> of baseball than I I did, but. Like I said, I was I was extremely lucky to be drafted by Texas because it was a great fit yep. in, in pretty much every way. But I had great people early on around me that knew I was a 17-year-old kid and I was going to make immature decisions and do things. And you guys stuck with me. Um, you know, Marty Scott, Mike Stone, you. There's just so many names that I could bring up. And you know, if it wasn't for me being in with Texas, no doubt I could have been with another club and um, organization. Can you hang with for, for half an inning? Sure. Half an inning more? Okay. We'll be back. Uh, still scoreless after three and a half. Is he in for pitcher's night. The guy is throwing a lot of strikes out here, both uh, Jeremy Ellickson and Nick Tepich, and the guy that threw a lot of strikes in his 20 years in the major leagues. <laughs> How about uh, some of these guys, Kenny, that uh, you had on those ball clubs, that ball club back in uh, 94. How in the world did you guys not win with uh, all those guys on there? Well, we had some hitters, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, I think our dilemma was catching the ball, but not hitting it. But, uh, you know, depth in the pitching staff, I remember. We had Will. I mean, we had some really good players um, that could 
everyday position players. It was pretty nice to be a pitcher on that team, but you know, it was hard to pitch back then because finding quality pitchers to come to this place uh, and pitch was difficult. Yeah, it's changed a little bit. Well, what was it like? Uh, what was it like throwing to Pudge? Great. I mean, his talent was so far ahead of anyone else's at the time. I mean, he did everything you can ask. I mean, throws runners out. He'd hit for power average. He could do pretty much anything he wanted to behind the plate. When it came to the game plan, how was how did you guys work together? Did he call the pitches and you threw it, or did you shake them off? How, how did you guys work together? Uh, well, early on, I was lucky. I had. Um, when I was young, I had veteran catchers like Sunberg, Gino Petrali, and all those guys that I didn't know anything, and I knew it. That was the only good thing. I knew I didn't know anything. <laughs> so I listened to them as much as I could, and then when um, you know I got to where I understood myself and knew what type of pitcher I was and what my strengths were, I would take control of my game a little bit mm -hmm. because I knew how I felt, but I also I'd want my catcher to come out and let me know if he saw something or felt something um, that I'd try to lean on a little bit. But, mm -hmm. Pudge was great. He didn't have to. He knew what I was able to do, and we usually were in sync with what we were wanting to do. Uh, my my ability at the end was about locating and changing speed, yeah, so sure. it wasn't a power game like it was early. But uh, mm -hmm. he took a, a lot of stress off of you in a lot of other areas, so you could focus on making quality pitches. Mm -hmm. Now we'll take a look at uh, our Ford leaderboard. And this uh, goes back in Major League history since they started taking into account or keeping track of the pickoffs. Kenny Rogers down there third all time. Andy Pettit, Mark Burley, the only ones ahead of uh, Kenny Rogers. Kenny, you you were a very good, uh, a great athlete, uh, not only for a pitcher but for any place. But you worked a lot on uh, the other phases of, of pitching besides just throwing the ball. I did. I did. I um I, I enjoyed it. Um, I think that's something that's kind of missed on a lot of pitchers' um, mindsets when they get out there. It's it's an added luxury if you're good at it, mm -hmm. but you don't just become good at it. I mean, you have to work at it to get there. Um, and I wish people would take advantage of it because I tell you, I've talked to many infielders in my life that appreciate my effort out there. Whether I get them or not, you know, doesn't make as big an impact. But these guys were afforded luxuries to, to shift in certain areas because they right. knew I would cover the middle as well as I could so that gives them the opportunity to shift in certain holes that they wouldn't on most pitchers and I was the beneficiary of me yes me trying to cover the dirt but also them being able to uh, move in certain areas making plays on balls in the hole at uh, third and short or in between first and second and I've had plenty of infielders come up and just you can see it in their eyes before they're going to say it because they they loved it because they look so good when they go <laughs> into those holes and they're really already taking right. a couple steps over but they wouldn't have gotten to him if they couldn't have uh, known what I was capable of doing. Or well, I, I remember picture. a moment in time on the backfield down in Port Charlotte <laughs> talking about how hard you work to become a fielder. I was walking into the beginning of the game and I happened to look to my left and I see two people working out. Ray Burris yeah. had a fungo <laughs> and a bucket of balls and I didn't re really recognize who the pitcher was but I noticed how hard he was hitting the ball. He was hitting the ball <laughs> As hard as he could, yeah. one hop smashes back to the mound, and I said to myself, "I got to see who's trying to catch these things." And I go, "That's Kenny Rogers." The season's opening up in a week, and I said to Ray, "Look, I like the work, but don't hurt that kid." Well, I think you knew I wasn't the smartest ball player ever, but uh, you know, I, I think I almost got a few coaches fired uh, over the years just because I I enjoyed doing that, but. What I was trying to get was, you know, game situations and, you know, just tapping it back to yeah. me. It was kind of a waste of time for everyone. So right. I, I wanted to do it right. Obviously, I didn't want to get hurt, but, you know, I really wanted to get everything possible. I mean, and I, you know, I kind of prided myself in it, but uh, it was a fun part of the game. I yeah. mean, when you when you get a hitter that hits a bullet to the left or right of you and you make a great stabbing play or whatever, that's better than striking them out. Because then they're like, all right, I can't hit it there anymore. So yeah. what you've done is they've got to try and do it into a certain area that might not be comfortable mm -hmm. for them. And I, I, you know, I've had hitters that I think appreciate it after a while. They just tried to not hit it up the middle, which, you know, that's a big, as big a compliment as you can get. So, but um, 
One of the reasons that we couldn't put you in a game right away in the rookie league was you didn't even know how to take a stretch. No. <laughs> how in the world did, how in the world, okay, you went from not knowing what a stretch was with a man on base to having one of the best pickoffs in the league. How would you learn to have a pickoff play I like that? Great. I had phenomenal coaches, and I watched all the other players that I played with. Uh -huh. um, Rob Clark, I don't know if you remember the sure. name. This yeah. is in yeah. that year. One of our, one of our rookie league one guys. One of the best pickoffs I ever saw. Yeah. And I watched him and talked to him, and. I think I did that most of my career is when I saw players that had things or did things that I would try to emulate or get better at, I'd ask them. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wasn't too proud to, to ask. It didn't matter what kind of player it was. You played with some pretty good pitchers, too, as, as yeah. teammates, Devin Brown and Darren Oliver. Thank you. I love that guy. John great Burris. Great, great people. But, um, Tell you, Keith, people don't realize it, but Kevin Brown was probably the best, most, the closest to a solid number one pitcher you've ever had here. Yeah, he yeah. was as dominant as there ever was here, and you know this wasn't an easy park. It was very difficult to throw up some tremendous numbers, and he, he'd be in the three and a half range or you know low threes, but that guy was as much of a you know dominant starter yep. I think in the league, and nobody really recognized it until he went to the National League I think. Yeah, I think it opened a lot of people's eyes, too. So, yeah. wow, we had him, didn't we? <laughs> well, this this place doesn't really, yeah. you know, it doesn't, you're going to have higher numbers here, you know, back in those days. You're going to have, you know, a, a more area, a bigger area than normal in some spots. And uh, National Leaguers, you can't compare, I didn't think, to National Leaguers fairly. But, uh, you know, it was just, you know, check your ego at the door, ego at the door, and so you win five to four. So what? <laughs> That's right. Correct me if I'm wrong on another memory. Was there a time in spring training as young players where you and Kevin Brown went on strike during spring training? Did you do that, or was that just, or was that just uh, it's possible? It's possible. I mean, I I could make some rash decisions. I, I there's a few regrets on my plate, I'm sure. But it seems to me like you guys were holding out one spring training before you had salary arbitration eligibility. You know, I remember Wayne Krisky was probably lowballing on your contract <laughs> offer, maybe. You know what? I remember one time where I think you're the the GM and. After my first year, and I was like, I pitched really well, and I was like, and I was like, just, I told my agents, I was like, just whatever's fair, I just want to play, and that's truly what I wanted. And then I remember you guys signed uh, Drew Hall and gave him, uh, like, I want to say 140 thousand for the year, and then I'm coming in. I think I was going to get like 90 or 100, and I was like, well, Drew had a five and a half ERA, and I had like a two six or something. And I was like, I went to you, and I, was, and I told him, I said, I'll sign it. If y'all think that's right, I'll sign it. No big deal. But then when I heard about Drew's, I didn't want more money. I just said, I went to you, and I said, will you just renew me? Because I just can't put my name on it, knowing, <laughs> knowing what I do and compared that's to that. A, that's an honest way of looking and at it. And I was like, I, I didn't want more. I just wanted not to have to sign it. And I just played. I didn't care. But uh, you let me well, out of that, which was great, because I told you I would, and I was I was Well, I fortunately, was that couple thousand dollars that we <laughs> left on the table, you made it up over the years. Yeah, I did. No, I, I, I was, I can't think of another person that was as lucky or more fortunate than I was over my career for sure to have one in the first place. Now, oh, you played for a lot of different teams. If, if you had to look at yourself as wearing one uniform, what, what's the team that you think of? Would it be the Rangers or one well, of your other teams? I mean, I played for Texas for almost 20 years of my professional career. I mean, I had seven years in the minors, and uh, I want to say 13 more here. I can't remember exactly, but you know, if there was one team I wanted to win with, it was always Texas. Sure. I mean, that's why I came back so many times. Yep. I mean, there's not another pitcher on the planet would keep coming back to the best hitters ballpark <laughs> in the world. But I, I always felt like I owed the Rangers because they drafted me in the last round of the draft, I think, and yeah. I just wanted to win here. And uh, it didn't happen when I was here, but uh, you guys came so close the last couple of years. Now, do you keep close tabs on baseball? Do you watch any games or just occasionally? Not even occasionally. Not even occasionally? <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but I... I really uh, don't, um, and I keep track of some guys that I still know and keep, you know, uh, in contact with. Um, uh, but I just watching it is so difficult when you played it, and yeah. you still want to play it. There's no way my body would let me, but I still want to, and I watch, you know, uh, for maybe an inning or two. But I have not watched the whole game in, since I left. Wow, I don't even know if I watched half a game, but uh, it is. Now what are your kids up to? 
Jesse's at Ole Miss. Um, she loves Ole Miss, and um, uh, my son's a senior this year in high school, and he wants to go to college at Ole Miss too. So cool. I have no idea where they picked Ole Miss out of. I had no input in that decision. <laughs> um, but uh, she's great there, and she loves it, so I'm, I'm very happy with her, and um, she's very responsible and does a lot of great things. So great. she's been very easy. My son, she's got him motivated to go too, so I'm ecstatic about that. Great. Any uh, any business going on? You doing anything on the side to <laughs> stay out of trouble? Surprisingly, I, I do. It's good. Uh, you know, uh, you never thought that many years ago this guy's going to have a business. <laughs> I um I invested in a, a business with a friend of mine. It's um, basically basically called Soberlink. Uh huh. It's uh, basically a breathalyzer with a lot of bells and whistles, GPS and tracking system where for people that. For criminal courts, if they uh, mandate you have to do this, or for recovery, wow. you can send a report in to keep yourself responsible. But it sends it instantaneously over the internet and gives that report to whoever's supposed to to help keep you on the right path. Which it's a great idea. It's been going well, um, and now we're getting people starting to copy it. Even though we've got it patented, which I don't understand, but uh, I'm learning business the hard way. But uh, it's been going well, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that it'll keep going. Kenny, Great. thanks for being with us. It's sure good to see you, and uh, congratulations on 20 years. It doesn't, doesn't seem possible. It thanks, is, it is great to see up. you guys again, and thanks for having me. And I, I, I will try to start watching a little bit more, and uh, <laughs> even just to remember a little bit. Kenny right. Rod, Take care, guys. We'll be back. Scoreless ball game. Still scoreless against the Tampa Bay Rays. Rays coming to bat with uh, Sean Rodriguez to start things off here in the fifth inning. And Rodriguez immediately pounds a high fastball into left field for a base hit. And that is the first hit of the night off of Nick Tepish. So four hitless innings for Tepish. And Rodriguez breaks it up with a leadoff single here in the fifth. And that happened just as Mark McLemore came in to sit down. Heck, I thought you were the doctor of defense. You got to catch that ball, don't you? No hitter going. There's a thing called a hit, <laughs> and that was it. That was it. That's exactly right. Well, appreciate appreciate you coming in, and uh, well, yeah, we saw Kenny uh, join us. He looks great. You guys had a, a few outings together. Pretty good bunt there. Throw by Giovanni Soto. Nice play. We get Logan Forsythe. Forsythe. Getting a sacrifice, but he was looking for base hit, too. Soto took it away from him. He was. It was a great play by Soto jumping off from behind there. But a great bunt by Forsythe he put down. And, you know, it was a sacrifice, semi-sacrifice, drag bunt. Got the job done, but Soto jumped out and had to make a perfect throw over to Aaron Sebia at first just to get him. Probably one of your former teammates. When you talk about making that play, no one ever made it better than Pudge, did no, they? No, <laughs> they did not. What made him so good at doing that play? He was quick. I mean, just quick feet, quick hands, quick release. Everything about Pudge is just quick. Uh -huh. uh, I loved how, you know, he worked behind the plate. And, you know, he looked like a base dealer behind the plate, basically. I mean, just getting rid of the ball, uh, the transfer, and then the accurate, super strong arm anywhere on the field. He, he can throw you out. And it, it was just... I've never played with anybody. I've never seen anything like it. 
You know, I know Johnny Bench was a great catcher. I didn't get the, you know, right. the, the luxury of seeing sure. him. But, uh, you know, in my era, Bud was absolutely the best. No, no one even close. You ever throw your ball to second base and hit you right in the palm of your glove and way, feel like it tore your hand off? Way too many times. <laughs> but that, you know, that, that happened early. But once I figured out, okay, I've got to catch it somewhere else or, yeah. the, or my hand is going to break, <laughs> I figured it out pretty quickly. But, uh, you know, I, I loved it. I would just sit there and he would, wherever I put my glove, it seemed that's exactly where he threw it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it was just, it was great being on the receiving end of that. Yeah, you talk about bench throwing. I, in my opinion, anyway, I, I saw a bench a lot in spring training, and um, he had as strong an arm as, as Pudge did, I think. Couldn't get rid of the ball as quick as Pudge. Pudge was quicker coming out of the chute, and both of them could throw the, both of them could have gone to the mound and thrown 95. Right, yeah. They right. had those kinds of arms, but... Uh, yeah, Pudge, Pudge had the unique combination, like you were talking about, the, the quickest feet I've ever seen behind the plate and that strongest arm. Well, it's, plus, he was deadly accurate. Oh, he was incredible. Yeah. And it didn't seem to matter whether he was throwing to second or third or first or wherever he had to throw, whatever kind of alignment he had to have, it was perfect every time. Yeah, and I, and I really had to adjust to him because he was so quick behind the plate and his arm was so strong. I had to cheat more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not used to having to get to the bag as early as I did with him. Um, but it was great once I figured that out. <laughs> Wild pitch, that uh, ball in the dirt, and just kind of caromed off of Giovanni Soto at an odd angle. So down to third goes John Rodriguez. He's there with one out. And Giovanni not quite getting the body bent over. Enough that time. It was far enough away from him. He didn't have time. To. So now, in the scoreless ball game, the Rangers will pull the infield all the way in. The count is two and two. And the pitch to Molina is inside, so it's a three and two count. All the infielders in at the cut of the grass. John Rodriguez, the runner at third, led off with a single. Went to, to second on the sacrifice, to third on the wild pitch. Now the payoff pitch to Beltre. He's coming to the plate. The good throw. They've got it. Great play by Beltre with no time to waste or to spare, I should say, and not a very good angle to throw. He threw a strike to Soto. Great play by Beltre. Great play by Soto at the plate. You know, being very careful to not block the plate without the ball. But you see this hot shot here, the hot corner again. Beltre picks it, comes up, throws a nice strike, clears the runner, doesn't throw it right at the runner, but he gives Soto, Soto gives him a nice target, and he throws it right to him. Soto doesn't block the plate, and they put it down. Boy, that's pretty from that angle. What a great camera shot. Doesn't get much better than this here. That's pretty much it. the only place Beltre could throw that ball right. too, isn't it? Right. If it's more to the left, he can't come back and make the tag. If it's more to the right, it might hit the runner. Right, right. Rodriguez did a great, uh, a great play there, running inside as much as he possibly could. He tried to get on that line and right. try and block that throw a little bit from Beltre. Uh, great base running there, but Beltre, you know, being the gold glover that he is down there, knew exactly where to throw it and he put it there. So that keeps us a scoreless ball game. Outstanding defense, and uh, now Molina at first with two outs here in the fifth inning. Kevin Kiermaier, a ground ball to second base, his first time up. Tepish, a high set back to the plate, and it is a strike. One and one. Adrian Beltre saying, yeah, that'll boy Giovanni. Nice play down there, Soto. Not much gets by uh, by Adrian, does it? No, it really doesn't. And that, you know, that's the kind of play that uh, makes you feel good mm -hmm. all around. It, it, it can spread throughout the rest of the, the team. You're playing nice, crisp defense, making the plays when you need to make them, how you need to make them, especially a tough one like that in a, in a ball game, you know, a 0-0 ball game. That's, I, I guess if you were to define teamwork, it would be a play like that where each guy is doing his job extremely well in the context of both of you coming together for a play. Execution. Beltre executed the nice catch, the nice throw. Soto, the nice catch and the nice tag. Left the lane open for Rodriguez to yep. get to the plate. 
and then they were able to make the play. Two and two now, the count to Kiermaier. Hey, that was Dr. Defense work. Some defense I had working there, didn't I? You did. Now you're right. <laughs> there, there you go. I made up for it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of slacked off when you first got here, but you picked it up. What did you say? A slow start, a good finish? It's all that matters. That's it. That is it. Molina not being held on by Carp at first base. Not really a threat to go anytime soon. And the pitch high and outside, so the count has gone full. Kiermaier hitting in the number nine slot. Trying to get aboard here in the fifth inning. Desmond Jennings, the leadoff man, he is waiting to be next. Kepish is ready. The payoff pitch. A little reset and try it again. Kiermaier in uh, last night's ball game had a triple and two official times to the plate, scored a run. The lefties, righties, uh, pretty distinct difference for Kiermaier. Left handed hitter is much better against right handed pitchers. And another pitch fouled away. Jose Molina is going to have to go over and get some oxygen from the Ranger bench. Inning by inning. Tepish has been spot on tonight. The last two innings at uh, 15 pitches total. There's 34 pitches through the first. Eighth pitch of this at bat coming. Got him swing. Oop, fouled down. Kind of got excited there. I was right behind <laughs> you. And Jose said, wait, wait a minute. Put the ball in play, please. He's going to say, I'm going to start halfway. Just don't <laughs> throw over here, all right? He hadn't done this much running all month. <laughs> Not getting no sympathy from his brother. He's looking at Joe Madden saying, get someone warmed up to go behind the plate. <laughs> this might be it for me. George Hendrick, the first base coach, is uh, probably having as much fun as, as the Molina brothers are. <laughs> Now Tepe's ready, and another 3-2 pitch is coming instead. We step off. That's not <laughs> right. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> That's respect. <laughs> Call strike three. Well, Kiermaier tossed the bat away, and uh, Joe West tossed him away. Fourth strikeout for Tepe. He works around the leadoff single. Halfway through the game, no score.
take pitcher Martin Perez to school. Log on to MetroPCSTakeAPlayer.com for your chance to win. MetroPCS, it's wireless for all. No, Martin will not fit in your lunchbox. You have to take the, the full size Martin Perez with you. Now Jeremy Hellickson back to the hill. Hellickson is uh, having quite a night, just like his counterpart Nick Tepe. Hellickson has allowed just three hits. He has struck out four through the first four. Rangers uh, begin things, the bottom third of the order. Here in inning number five, Leonis Martin, who singled the left his first time up. We'll lead things off. Showing bunt, and that brought uh, Evan Longoria charging down the line from third. One ball, no strikes. Martin now at uh, 251, and that single last time up. But he cranks one down the right field line. It's hooking into the corner, but going foul. He got a catch. He got a one-handed no wonder he caught it. He's got Beltre's uniform on. <laughs> Apparently that came with the glove magnet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great feeling. Let's see how he did it. Piece of cake. And what are the odds? You bring your glove to the game. You've got a seat right there on the edge. <laughs> and you get a foul ball. Well, he was ready. Ball off the fists of Martin. It's one ball and two strikes. I can tell you that uh, that base hit that Martin got back in the second inning snapped an 0 for 12 for Leonis. Ellickson to the wind and the one two. And that will even things out. Each club tonight has committed one error. Tampa error came last inning. An error on the uh, throw to first base by James Loney, the first baseman. Looked like Zobris doesn't play a lot of shortstop now. It looked like he threw him a sinker and uh, Loney, Loney not able to uh, do more than slow the ball down. Change up is pulled foul. The count remains full. You know, and that's the toughest thing about playing multiple positions, especially multiple infield positions like Zobris does, playing second base, third base, shortstop, the outfield. You've really got to be uh, aware of where you are, what position you're playing, because all three of those spots require a different arm angle. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, with where he also plays the outfield, he has four different arm angles that he has to use. And when you're at short, You've got to come over the top more and get some carry on the ball. But he threw that one like he was at second base, and that's kind of, you know, the reason for the tail, for the sink in it. You're talking to get the ball to spin backward to you. Get that backward more. spin, get that get that carry on mm -hmm. that ball. So you've got to come over the top with it. A lot like third base. Third base, you can, you know, kind of drop down, you know, maybe three quarters a little bit. Second base, you can even drop down further than that if you'd like. And Leonis Martin, a good at bat. So that's back-to-back -back base hits for him. How many different gloves will you have to use between second, short, and the outfield, and then maybe third base? How many different gloves? I used three. Uh, I had my second base glove, and then the glove that I used for short, I also used a third. And then I had an outfield glove. So I would bring three gloves to the bench every night. The smallest one would have been the second, second base, base glove. glove. Right. I needed a bigger one for short and third because uh, the ball gets, especially third base, because they're a little bit, you know, yeah. a little quicker than second base. <laughs> So, yeah, that so I took, you know, three gloves, and that's typically what guys use. Some guys may use, you know, two gloves in the infield, but uh, I needed three. And that outfield glove, you're trying to get a bushel basket? That was definitely what I had. I, I, I think I was right on the edge of uh, the <laughs> limit there. Get it as long as I possibly that's could. Exactly. Is that a hard adjustment, using different gloves in big league game? You know, it really wasn't for me. And I did I, I did a lot, especially with uh, when I was with Lou. I mean, there's some, some games I'd start at second, I'd go to left, I'd end up in right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd play two or three different positions uh, in one game. But a lot of times, I, I definitely played two positions in the same game, infield and outfield. But it wasn't a tough transition for me from one glove to the other. 
We just bring all three and have them have them in the dugout. All three Wait. have them in the dugout. Absolutely. How long did it take you to break in a glove so you were comfortable using it in the big league game? Well, for me, I used a different brand. I didn't. I wasn't a Wilson guy or a Louisville guy. I had. I found a brand, Spalding, which broke in quickly. Uh -huh. I mean, it would take me two or three days, and it'd be game ready. You're kidding? No. Two or three days, it would be game ready. Now it would last maybe three weeks. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you just had to have a lot of them. Yeah, I, I mean, I tip. I would get probably ten gloves a month. You're kidding? No, I would. I ran through them. Wow. On the move, the throw to second, not in time. But they will have time to get Soto at first. So it goes one four three. And the put out in Hellickson. Kind of a dangerous play, trying to make a make a play that really wasn't there. And Martin sliding in safely. That's going to bring Joe Madden out to second base. And while he goes out, he will uh, turn his back on the umpire and look at the in the uh, in the dugout to see what the decision was. It's a video play, people. Whoa! Oh boy! <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, I think that uh, I think the ball on that replay it didn't look like it to the naked eye, but you can uh, tell right there the ball. In the glove and the onus's foot not to the bag. Well, the uh, challenge has been issued by Joe Madden. And, uh, the crew chief uh, Joe West, along with the second base umpire Gabe Morales, will go to the headsets. They will be connected to the replay command center in New York, where the umpire and crew assigned to this team or this game will review it. And uh, this doesn't look like it will take very long. Well, it's amazing. You know, now that we've gotten kind of used to replay for the first four months of the five months of the season, how deceiving plays can be from sitting up here watching with their naked eye. You know, plays that I, yeah, I would swear that, you know, yeah, that was not, not a, that wasn't even close. No, no, was. no chance. More than close. Uh, it's a tough call for the umpire too because it's very difficult. He was in the right position, but it's difficult with the dust flying to see exactly when that foot hits the bag. Joe West had, uh, had the wrong headset. He was connected to uh, DFW traffic control. <laughs> Caught a guy in the right one. Now he's got New York on there. Joe had planes landed from the northwest, and that wasn't where he was supposed to. Well, the owners, meantime, uh, smiling in irony out there at second base. And uh, Joe will tell us exactly what happened. He is out there. It's a double play. And, uh, Martin, I think he had an inkling that was probably going to happen. Yeah. Now let's take time here for Mazda game break with John Radigan. John. Oh, thanks, John. Yeah, the only good news for Detroit is Kansas City is getting beat by Oakland, so they might not <laughs> lose a game. Well, base is empty now. Rudnett Odor takes a strike, nothing in one. Well, they did get some good news on uh, Verlander. Nothing, yeah. uh, nothing structurally wrong, just some uh, inflammation in his shoulder. At least that was a preliminary uh, read on the MRI that he had. No, I don't know if it's me, guys, but tell me, does it seem like there are more elbow injuries now than shoulder injuries? Yeah. Yeah, it, it used it to be does. shoulder injuries, you know, I thought yeah. more more than elbow injuries, but now it looks like it's, you know, kind of turned around. I guess that's a good thing for the pitchers, right? It's easier to fix an elbow than a shoulder, more right? Su more successful, yeah, with, his, with the elbows, the way things are right now. And, I, you know, and I think the... Uh, there's a base hit for Odor. I looked at two for two. A solid two-out single. Yeah, I, I think the, the way that... Injuries are diagnosed now has improved so, so much. They are able to diagnose shoulder injuries a lot sooner now, so you don't have the traumatic uh, injuries to the shoulder you used to have. Guys are shut down earlier at a different stage, and, and the the severe tearing of the shoulder isn't quite as, as frequent. Elbow, I, I guess it's it's more of a, a one pitch or a couple pitch thing, where it happens quickly. Would you say it's safe to say that back when you pitched in earlier? 
pitchers pitched more often with shoulder pain than they do now. Yeah. Seems like if you feel anything in your shoulder, yeah. you shut it down now. An, an abundance, abundance of caution now. It's yeah. uh, uh, anything involved in the shoulder. And, and, you know, it used to be, a, well, I, I think everybody that threw had it from one time or another, biceps tendonitis, where the front of your shoulder hurt. Well, I mean, that was... That was standard, I think, for pitchers then. I, you know, if you didn't have that, you weren't working hard enough. Uh-huh. But now if you get that, you're shut down for two weeks. And yeah. You go on the DL. And that's all there is to it. But the first time it pops up, they get it out of the way and, and rehab it. Uh, and I, I don't think our rehab techniques were <laughs> anything <laughs> like they are now either. Our idea of rehab was a, a cup of ice three times a day, and that was it. If you, if you were having rotator cuff problems, where did it hurt? Where did you feel it? Just behind the top of the shoulder. In the back, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know where I noticed it was in, in my grip. My grip got weak when I was throwing the ball. Not pain, but a weak? Yeah. It was weak? Yeah, it wasn't as much pain as it was weakness to where when I released the ball, I didn't have the pop on it today. Oh. I couldn't pop down through it. That's what I noticed first. It was different. Out of play, off the bat of two. It's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, but I think that I, I think that the ability to diagnose shoulder problems has really gotten a whole lot better, and uh, a lot more caution given with that. The elbows, you know, as easy it is as it is to fix. If you can afford taking a year off, it's it's a pretty easy fix. Mm-hmm. Seems like they can afford it pretty well now. A lot of them are doing it. <laughs> Popped up on the left side, Longoria. And that will do it. Rangers get a couple of hits in the inning, but they uh, strand one. You can hang with us, Mac, or are you? Are you I'm here. here. Okay. Mac's going to stay with us. On to the six. Bola still. On Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. The Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event now playing at a Ford dealer near you. And by a reminder from Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Designate a driver. A nice crowd on hand here on this Tuesday night. A very well pitched ball game so far. Just six hits total in the game. Nick Tepish has allowed. Just one. That was a leadoff single in the fifth inning. He goes to work here in the sixth, the top of the order, and Desmond Jennings takes strike one. Jennings, a fly ball to center and a tapper right back to the mound. Gets this one well to right center field. Leonis Martin on a hurry, in a hurry, but that ball is by him and off the wall. Jennings not stopping at second. He is headed for third, will reach there standing. A leadoff three bagger. Well, 
Jonas Martin trying to run that thing down got uh, pretty close to the wall when the Karam took the ball right by him. And Jennings hits a pitch in the bottom of the strike zone and hit it well, hit it high and looked like he was kind of slicing away from Martin, who was playing a little bit over in left center field, so he had a long way to go. And Jennings hit that ball hard enough to where they almost never really got close to catching it. Overran it. Took, it. took him a while to get the ball back in. A well, leadoff triple now with nobody on. Rangers again having to play the infield all the way in. This time it's Ben Zobrist up there. Rangers played the infield all the way in with uh, Jose Molina at the plate last inning. And it resulted in uh, a play at the plate. John Rodriguez cut down by Adrian Beltre. Left center field. That ball hit pretty well. But into the alley goes Adusi. Makes the catch, tagging at third. And coming in to score is Desmond Jennings. The sacrifice Ben Zobras fly. One nothing Tampa Bay. And let's go over to Jim Knox. Jim. All right, Buzz, real quick. I'm with Elvis's entourage right here at Globe Life Park. This is Neely. She is is with the Down Syndrome Guild of Dallas, and Elvis is a big part of this organization, right? He is. He's such a huge supporter. The Down Syndrome Guild of Dallas provides information and support to people with fam their, people with Down Syndrome and their families in the Metroplex, and Elvis has really stepped up. Along with donating these seats, he also is a big part of our annual fundraiser, the Buddy Walk. He just, he's, he has done so much for our organization, really stepped up to be a part of it. All right, Neely, we're glad to have you guys out here. Enjoy the rest of the game, all right? Appreciate it. Thank you, Buzz. All right, Nazi, thank you. Well, a run in, first run of the game, and Tampa Bay taking a 1 0 lead. Matt Joyce, the hitter. Joyce hit by a pitch last time to the plate. He is 0 for 1 officially. Tepish now with his 73rd pitch of the night. And it's fouled back. 2 and 1. Joyce at 279 for the season with seven home runs. Handled the uh, PH chores in last night's ball game. Pulls this one to right field and hit well. Into the corner, back is Chu. The ball is off the wall and gets by him. At second, heading for third is Joyce. Here comes Odor's throw. It's late and it goes into the photographer as well. And that will allow. Matt Joyce to trot down the line and score the second run of the inning. How about that? A triple, a throwing error, resulting in a run, and Tampa takes a 2 0 lead over the Rangers. Oh, Joyce ripped that ball and it hit the angled part of the wall. Chu got near the ball and the ball just caromed right by him. Take another look at it. Hard hit ball by Joyce, almost a home run. Reached out and hooked it to right field. You see Chu going after the ball. It hits the L in Globe Life. And probably the smartest thing after Odor caught this ball would have been to hang on to it. Really didn't have a good shot at third base. Especially with the angle that he had with the runner in his way. Two triples and three at bats. Yep. And the error on Odor allowing the run to score. Well, the Rangers now are in a 2 0 hole, and Evan Longoria was after that first pitch from Tepish for strike one. Longoria tonight, a couple of fly balls to center. One hit relatively deep last time up. Adding 249 at the moment. Nothing in two. Nick Tepish, who had given up just one hit coming into this inning, gave up the uh, leadoff triple to Desmond Jennings, the sacrifice fly to Zobrist, and then the triple to Matt Joyce, who scored on the throwing error by Rugnet Odor. And this thing is turned around very quickly here in this sixth inning. Rangers now with two errors tonight. Another 0 2 pitch. 
And Mac, what happens on that relay play? You're the second baseman. Your back is to third base, so you really don't know where the runner is. Do you depend on someone else to tell you to hold on to it or throw it? No, actually, your back shouldn't be to third base. You should be going out and you should be sideways. So ah, you're, okay. you've got to be looking at the outfielder, looking at the runner, and lining up towards third base because you know there's going to be a play at third if there's going to be a play. So you're moving in position. You're looking at the outfielder. You're looking at the runner and seeing by the time you get the ball, you should know where he is. Oh, I got you. And that's, you know, you're going to have the shortstop behind you telling you, you know, throw it or not. But you're the one getting the ball. You know your arm strength. You know if you've got a good angle at the at the runner at third base or a chance to get the runner at third base. Right. So ultimately, the decision is yours. Into center field, Longoria just reaching out, rolling one up the middle for a base hit. He is aboard with one out, and James Loney now coming up. First baseman, James Loney. Now you see Chu getting the ball, and now Odor should be lined up. Now he is sideways, but he's not looking back and forth at the runner. You've got to look, you've got it, your head has to be on a swivel, and here he's got to make a better throw. If he's going to throw the ball, he's got to know that Joyce is coming around. He's rounding, so he's got to throw that ball to the inside part of the bag and give Beltre an opportunity to catch it. Actually, the smarter play would be to not have thrown the ball because he didn't have a chance at it. But if you're going to make that throw, you've got to make sure that your third baseman has a clear line to catch the ball. Runner on the move, and uh, Loney lost a fly ball to left field. Adusi with the catch back to first, Longoria. And Joe Madden playing a little hit and run with his number five hitter, and Loney skies out, two away. Sean Rodriguez will be next. And back to the, to the relay, you know, that's, that's something that you have to do over and over and over again, and that's, you know, you've got to remember Odor's a young player. He hasn't had the experience in doing that enough times to really, you know, it, 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 to, in order for it to just be mm -hmm. not even a second thought. It's right. just, just second nature to him. Yeah, but you, you better believe he, he learned from it. Yeah. You know, he, he knows, he realized, hey, maybe I shouldn't have thrown that ball. And still at the point, I would imagine, where he's having to think his way through a, a play like that instead of just go ahead and doing what he knows is right. Right. Absolutely. And sometimes the right play is not making a throw. Yeah. Sometimes that's the best throw. No throw. One and all, the count to Rodriguez, who has been on base both times tonight, got on by an error in the second, and a single his last time. It's that strike from Tepic. Nick, uh, quality stuff throughout the duration of his outing tonight. 83 pitches, and uh, he still has good, uh, pretty good command of what he's throwing out there. Back to the plate. He misses outside and low. It's two and one. John Rodriguez, a 230 hitter. Another one of those guys that uh, Tampa Bay has. A, a very versatile player. He was uh, a, a shortstop by trade. Originally, he plays outfield. And tonight he's DHing. Plays the three infield positions. Probably can play first base too. Joe Madden's club uh, kind of littered with those guys that can play almost any place. When you look at their their roster, their team batting, individual batting on this team, the team is hitting 254. And this is a case of where the uh, the team is bet better than the sum of its parts. And these guys contribute in ways that their batting average and that kind of thing won't uh, won't tell you. Yeah, they're a team that they do the little things. They move runners over from second base to third base. They bunt them over first and second. That'll take care of the uh, Rays, but Tampa Bay takes the lead. They get two runs on three hits, one big error in the inning. And they strand one after five and a half, two nothing Rays.
Sonic Slam Inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $200 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are in for Ansi Kennedy from Poetry, Texas. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Ansi Kennedy from Poetry, Texas will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. The Rangers uh, playing from behind now. 2 nothing Tampa Bay. Elvis Andrus, Mike Karp, and Adrian Beltre, the first three Rangers to do the swinging against Jeremy Hellickson. Tampa Bay able to put together three hits for two runs in the top of the six. Rangers trying to answer, and Elvis, one for two, will start things off. One ball, no strikes. Elvis now with a hit in eight of his last nine ball games against the Rays. Coming into play tonight, Elvis for his career, a 318 average. And that's not a small sample. That's a 160 at bats. 1-1 one, one pitch from Hellickson. But is popped up, and it's going to land foul and stay foul. We'll come back and try it in a ball and two strikes. Well, Elvis, the slow walk back to home plate. Rangers, uh, five base hits. They had two hits in the fifth inning, but a double play after a challenge created the... Uh, lack of scoring for the Rangers with those two hits. Elvis ready, so is Hellickson. Now he decides better and steps back. Must not have taken that 25, in, uh, 25 seconds that Tom was telling you about that he takes. Yeah, I think he's speeding it up a little bit this year. Might have caught himself. He didn't want to go too fast. He's fouled back. Elvis giving himself a little tutorial on what he wanted to do with that last pitch. Elvis is single, sharply hit to left field. Last time up, he lined into a double play. Again, the one-two. That will even things up. Elvis this year against Rays pitching. Six for 17. About a 340 or so, 345. The 2 2 pitch. Check this swing. The count is full. Elvis trying to get aboard to start things off here in the Rangers six. Mike Carp, the first baseman, waits to be next. Our Chevy pitch tracker showing you that last uh, offering. Could have been. Now the payoff pitch on the way. Inside corner, call strike three. Elvis not happy with Joe West, but Elvis also knows that Joe West isn't uh, the guy you want to turn around and be demonstrative to. See where it was. Shooting for the inside corner. Yeah, almost got the corner. Elvis might have had the argument on that one. Well, that is strikeout number five for Hellickson. One out. Here's Carp, who is 0 for 2, and fouls that first pitch off. Nothing in one. Carp tonight has lined sharply to right field and struck out. 189 the average. One for nine in a Ranger uniform. Strike two. Ellickson, a big sigh, and into the wine he goes. Way inside. Mike Tarp, uh, an injury-filled 
first part of the year with the Red Sox. In and out of the lineup, mostly out. Never really got himself on track. And of course, he had that groin injury just uh, on the last road trip. And it slowed him down with the Rangers. And the pitch inside, two balls and two strikes now. Infield plays Carp, maybe a step around to the right, the outfield, shading him a couple of steps to the left. 2 2 pitch. And a run the count full. Back to back hitters now for Hellickson as you look at the defense. Hellickson has gone to a full count, both Elvis and uh, now Mike Carp. Adrian Beltre is going to follow Mike Carp in the order. Payoff pitch to Carp. High ball four. And there is a walk. First one that has been allowed by Jeremy Hellickson tonight. So let's take a look back with our box vision now of that uh, play at the plate back three innings ago. Go back to the fifth inning here, and you've got Rodriguez at, at third base, and you've got the Rangers infield in. And he's going on contact, meaning no matter what that ball is, a line drive, a pop-up, or a ground ball, he's going. And there's only one play Beltre had, and he had to make a perfect throw to Soto at the plate to get him. And he cleared that lane, made a nice shot to, to Soto. Soto applied the tag. Great play all around. That's one of those plays that you work on, you know, a lot during spring training. Uh, the infielders work on throwing the ball. You know, uh, maybe chest high, and then they'll work on throwing the ball down low so the catcher doesn't have a whole lot of time to put the tag on. If it's going to be a little bit closer than that, you want to be able to throw that ball low, close to the plate, so the uh, catcher doesn't have a long way to go with it. And Beltre made a perfect throw to Soto there. That's not, a, not an easy play. They both made it look easy, but it really wasn't. Well, as you said, executed well on both ends of that. All in one, the count to Adrian. That ball's rifled to left field. In a hurry, here's Joyce. He has to play it on a hop and gets by him. Around the third goes Carp. Into second is Beltre. And with one out now, the Rangers have the tying runs in scoring position. And Joyce played himself right into a hard spot out there. That ball short hopping him. I think for a while, Joyce was thinking he might have a chance to catch that ball. He was going to give it a shot. Beltre hits the breaking ball in the left field. Might have been a little bit of a hooking, sinking ball. Joyce realizes he can't catch it a little bit too late. Now he's in no man's land. Couldn't keep it in front of him. It goes by him in second and third. Not sure if that'll probably go as a single in there, but maybe a double on the bad hop. It's a bad feeling when you know <laughs> you're, you're, gonna, you're caught in the middle of a hop. Yep. Yeah, Steve Weller, the official scorer, scoring that a single and an error. Well, the uh, second error of the game. Charge to the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Second and third now, just one out. Right? There's uh, an opportunity here in the sixth inning to answer the two runs that Tampa Bay put up. Jim Aducey is at the plate, and the Rays will play the infield back. Aducey tonight, 0 for 2, a ground ball and a strikeout. Ellickson will work from the stretch and deals a breaking ball in for strike one. Left hander Jeff Bellavo is loosen, loosening in the uh, Tampa bullpen, Tampa Bay bullpen. Ellickson with the 0 1 pitch. What oh, a good changeup. Nothing in two. Jim Aducey now, two for his last 25 times of the plate. That's over the last 10 ball games, and he's starting to look like he's uh, maybe he's trying to squeeze the sawdust out of that bat handle a little bit. Understandable. A young hitter trying to do a little bit more than he's 
escape the lug? Did he go around? Yes, he did. Joe West making the call. And down on strikes is Jim Edusha. Well, from up here, it didn't look like he swung. Might look different from the side, but. No, I don't think he went at all. It didn't occur to me that he swung at it. We're not as close as Joe West, though. You get a pretty good idea from this angle what Joe West saw. Saw that bat going through oh, the hitting yeah. zone. Oh, yeah. yeah, the end of the bat went yep. through. Didn't look like it from back here, but we're not umpires, and Joe West is. Good call, Joe. So six strikeouts now for Hellickson. Two outs. Yeah, J.P. Aaron Sebia will try and uh, get the Rangers even with a base hit or put them ahead with a long ball. Certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. JP with seven of the eight home runs since the All Star break. And he had plenty of distance, but uh, the ball just a little foul off the facing of the third deck. You know, it still amazes me. An old teammate of mine, and you guys know him, he played here, he used to hit foul balls, a right handed hitter. Would hit foul balls out of the stadium over the third base side. Ian Kinsler. <laughs> nope. Oh. Brian Downing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Brian I, Downing. Could, I could yeah. never understand how he could do that. I mean, literally hit a ball over the third yeah. base dugout <laughs> and out of the stadium. <laughs> Forget yeah, about I that. Can't yeah. even conceive of the angle that you would have to have with your bat meeting the ball to do that. I have no idea. He used to, uh, used to marvel at Kinsler doing that a couple of times, but it wasn't quite as far. Oh, no. Distance-wise. Yeah, BD, he, he, there were a couple stadiums he hit it out of. <laughs> it is not safe being on deck behind him, that's for sure. I'll bet. One and one, the count to Aaron Sebia. High chopper, Longoria gets there before the hop and throws out J.P. Side retired Rangers have a golden opportunity to go by the wayside. No runs, a hit, two left. Back, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll see you after the ball game on Rangers 5. 2 nothing. Tampa Bay. A very quiet evening uh, for the hitters until the sixth inning. Then it got uh, a little bit raucous around here. Jennings and Joyce for Tampa Bay both had triples and both scored in the top of the sixth inning. Rangers uh, had a couple of hits from both Leonis Martin and Rugnet Odor. Rangers had the tying runs on base and in scoring position in the bottom of the sixth, but couldn't get the runners home. So two nothing as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Nick Tepish back to the hill. He will face the bottom third of the 
Tampa order, and Logan Forsythe takes strike one. Forsythe, the sacrifice bunt, and a ground ball to short. Oh one. Now a ball and a strike. Now, regardless of uh, of the results thus far, this is probably as well as I think we've seen Nick Tepish uh, pitch into the seventh inning this year. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to see Nick finish off the seventh inning mm -hmm. and finish seven innings. He's had a number of games where he's been very strong through five and two thirds or maybe six innings, but it's had a little bit of a problem finishing off the seventh inning. That'd be nice to come back from the two run six to have a good seventh inning and finish with really his third nice start in a row. Coming into the game, he'd had a couple of good starts. Six innings, three runs against Oakland. And then in his last start, it was at Chicago, five and two thirds, scoreless, one walk and a couple of strikeouts. Line drive, Elvis right there. Got a half step up and takes care of that Logan Forsyth lineup. One gone. No one out now. Jose Molina will come up. Molina twice is grounded out tonight. Two runs on four hits for the Rays. No runs and six hits. All the Rangers. Molina fouls back that first pitch. It is nothing and one. Molina now a 189 average. Now 0 and 2. Jose Molina turning things uh, up a bit. Hit about uh, 310 for a streak of about a month. It's fouled away. Now another 0 2. Jose Molina, Benji Molina, Yadier Molina. Three of the best catchers that you can imagine. They all have to be from the same family. <laughs> that is amazing. What do you think they I'd like to see what that table looks like at Thanksgiving? Yeah. I, I say, what do you think they talk about catching during Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> The uh, that's not a one turkey family. No, for that's Thanksgiving. A, that's a talented family, boy. Yeah. Two two. We'll try it again. Benji on the left played until. 2011. And a two hopper down to Beltre. Adrian picks it off. Two gone. Well, folks, this Sunday, that's August 17th, the Rangers take on the Angels in a 205 game. And the first 10,000 kids, 13 and under, will receive a Texas Ranger growth chart. That's courtesy of Medical Center Arlington Fitness All-Stars program. Get your tickets at TexasRangers.com, or if you prefer, you can call 972 Rangers. No two away here in the seventh inning. Kevin Kiermeyer will step in for his third at bat. Kiermeyer, a ground ball to second and a strikeout. He was called out on strikes last time. And uh, kind of questioning the Tossed the bat away and looked at Joe West. And I don't know if you're a rookie and you uh, 
show any kind of emotion with Joe West. Now, he's not the right guy to do that. No, I don't think. I don't think Joe liked the bat flip. No. And he. Uh, he seems to have a pretty long memory too for stuff like that. <laughs> I'm not saying that he's going to take it out on uh, on Kevin Kiermaier, but I just would be swinging, not taking anything that you think is close. Two and one. Yep, he's now just over the 100 pitch mark, 101. About 70 percent strikes tonight, and that's. Uh, been a good showing from Nick Tepish. Broken bat roller out to Odor. And a good seventh inning. There you go, Tom. That's what you're talking about. Yep, there you nice go. Nice clean one, two, three, seven. We'll take the stretch here at Globe Live Park with the Rays leading the Rangers two to nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. A fan photo selection. AT&T making all this possible and appreciate all the uh, support we've gotten from all of you. Fayan sent this one in. Elvis, uh, every time you steal a base, you st oh, isn't that nice? Steal my heart. Thank you, Fayan. We appreciate that. If you folks would like to tweet your photos, it's hashtag Southwest Fan Photo. And you never know, yours might be chosen to uh, be revealed on the air. Let's head down to the field, Emily Jones. Em? Well, Buzz, hopefully Leonis Martin tonight, a sign of things to, cover, to come, rather. His uh, struggles recently have been well documented, and this is what Wash had to say about them before the game. I just got to relax. Uh, what happens to young guys like Martin, um, he's never failed before. So when failure hit, they panic and they try to do more. You got to simplify things. You got to back off. You got to go back to basics. You got to start doing the little things, and um, all of a sudden, you, you, things come back together. Buzz and Tom, you guys must have been talking to Wash, because y'all sure are saying a lot of the same things. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, my, I don't think what you know Wash is talking about or what we talk about is any any uh, secret. It's fairly common for young hitters to have that same kind of reaction that Leonis has had. You, you tend to try and do a little bit more than maybe what you're capable of. Or, there's a base Boy, hit to left that. field. That's three for three, and two of them going that way, and one to right field. So that's uh, that's a pretty solid outing. I guarantee you, right now, Dave Magadan, Gary Pettis, Ron Washington are extremely happy yep. with a game that Leonis Martin is at. Two well-hit base hits to left field. Hasn't done a lot of that, but hopefully that's a sign of things to come. You know, a young hitter that's struggling a little bit. It's kind of like a young pitcher who feels like he just has to throw the ball harder. Mm -hmm. You know, the more trouble you're in, the harder I've got to throw. Well, for a hitter, the more you're struggling, the harder you've got to hit it, the more pitches you've got to hit. And that leads to 
swinging at off speed pitches in the dirt and trying to pull the ball and you actually go against what you should be doing which is taking a step back relaxing and as Wash says let the game come to you and in this case let the pitch come to you don't attack that curveball out of the strike zone wait on it get a better look at it Wash was talking about this before the ball game and if you get a better look at it you're better prepared to lay off the one in the dirt and then use your natural ability and hit that pitch away from you out over the plate line it in the left field Giovanni Soto he lines one to deep left that is over the head of Joyce all the way to the wall Martin being held to third, Steven into second with a crushed double, Giovanni Soto. And the Rangers again, runners at second and third, this time nobody out in the seventh inning. That was a nice piece of hitting by Martin to line that ball the opposite way. And then Giovanni with a short, quick stroke made solid contact. That ball just jumped off his bat. He gets a great pitch to hit, but he also takes a great swing at it. Nice short swing. Ball jumps off his bat. Hellickson's probably glad he didn't elevate it and hit it out of the ballpark. But Joyce didn't have a prayer on that one. That just sailed right over his head to the base of the wall. So Soto gets to Peralta, as did uh, Leonis Martin. Second and third now, nobody out. Sorry, I said Hellickson, didn't I? Peralta's in there. Rugnet Odor is two for two. Chance here to get the Rangers even, and he hits a towering fly ball to right. Deep into the corner goes Kiermaier. He has a play, makes the catch. Tagging at third, Leonis Martin. He will score. And tagging up at second, moving to third, Giovanni Soto. It's now a 2-1 to one Tampa Bay lead. As uh, Rubnet Odor didn't miss by much of putting the Rangers ahead, but he did get the run home with a sack fly. Yeah, he hit it deep enough not only to get the runner home from third, but also to get the man from second over to third, where he could now score on a fly ball by Chu. Gets a curveball in the inside part of the plate, but it stays up a little bit. Gets a good swing on it, gets underneath it a little bit, but he hit it deep enough to accomplish what he wanted to do, get one run in at least and move the runner over to third. Well, now the Rays go into that shift, but they're playing the infield in. They want to try and cut down the uh, tying run at the plate if they possibly can. Chu 0 for 3 tonight. And Peralta misses low and away. One ball, no strikes. Chu a line drive to right, a strikeout, and a pop out. Average at 243, trying to increase his RBI total, which currently is at 37. Check swing. It's now 2 and 0. Oh. Peralta, an excellent split fingered fastball, along with a four seamer and an occasional change. Really tough to, uh, when he's throwing the ball well, to get on top of the ball, or get underneath the ball, I should say. You tend to be on top of it. That pitch going down. It's three balls and no strikes. So, two. Trying to get the tying run home or get on base for Elvis Andrews, who waits to be next. Now Jeremy Hellickson worked the first six innings, shut the Rangers out on six hits. Gave way to Joel Peralta, who came in to allow a single, a double, and a sacrifice fly. And the 3-0 to two. That ball's right for the right center field. Kiermaier on the run, leaps up, it's over him. All the way to the wall. In the score, Soto. Two to second. It's a brand new ball game tied at two. The Rangers doing a pretty good job of lighting up Joel Peralta. Our team hit the ball solidly. Soto ripped the ball left field. Odor just got underneath one, hit it pretty deep to right field. And now Chu sends a line shot over Kiermaier's head in right field. Which pretty much erases everything that Jeremy Hellickson had done for six innings and a couple of hours in this ball game. A matter of four or five minutes, the Rangers have taken any chance Hellickson had of winning the game away. So 
Well, Chu ties the ball game. Now Elvis trying to untie it. And that pitch in the dirt for ball one. <laughs> Adrian getting a little uh, excited. And rightfully so. Looks like wash on that one, <laughs> moving the runners around. Now Peralta back with the 1 0 pitch. That is high. Two balls, no strikes. And Peralta having a little trouble with command of his pitches here tonight. That's not a, a normal uh, problem that he has. This Tampa Bay uh, staff and their bullpen have been outstanding for the last two months. Well, Peralta only gives up a 213 opponent's batting average. He's given up three ropes and four hitters. Elvis one for four in his career against Peralta with a home run. It's that splitter that's in. Two balls and a strike. Jeff Bellavo, the left hander. Ready in the bullpen and uh, following Elvis in the order, a left handed hitting Mike Gart. Mike in the on deck circle. Chu at second, getting his lead there at the bottom of your screen. He has tied the ball game, driving in his 38th run of the year on a double. Peralta, a couple of looks back there. Now the pitch. And Elvis shoots it out of play down the right side. Let's take a look at the uh, Coors Light cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Tampa Bay Rays will have three runs or fewer, 15 consecutive road games now. That's uh, put them in the same company with the 68 Indians and the 2010 Cubs. The only team since 1914 to accomplish that. You start getting in company where you can say the only team since 1914. That's pretty impressive. That's so. The one two pitch. Down the left field line, but Elvis hooked it. Elvis back into the seats. Oh, in this outing, Peralta is definitely not fooling anybody. Yet. The splitter didn't do a whole lot. Stayed up there. It was very hittable for Elvis. Just a little bit out in front of it. Jose Molina out to uh, have something to say to Joel Peralta. Peralta, a 38 year old from the Dominican Republic. Joel West uh, stepping out in front of home plate, saying something to Jose Molina as he dusted off the plate. Joe's going to go over and uh, check with the what they want to do. I, I believe they're going to check for the count. We have it at two and two. The scoreboard has it at one and two. And I believe two and two is the proper uh, the proper count. But this is an umpire review for the purpose of getting the ball strike count correct. I think uh, Jose Molina and and probably Elvis Andrews mentioned it to him. Hey, what's what's the count and. Uh, Joe had something different than what the scoreboard said and wasn't really sure about it. Hey, Joe's got Dave Curlis down there on camera. You could just ask Dave what the count is. Dave will keep track of that. There's Dave right there. Let him know, Dave. Two, that two, two. He knows. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> What's the hold up here? Dave's got it under control. <laughs> Let's see if Dave's right. You were known to be wrong? Uh, no, not really. They're counting the pitches now. <laughs> Joe's uh, satisfied. He's got the right answer. He's He's keep, gonna it, gonna keep it to himself. He's though. not going to tell us. Uh, <laughs> I know, but you guys don't. Whatever he said it was before he went over there to check. <laughs> it is two balls and two strikes. Now we'll reset and go at it again. Dave knew. Yep. Way to stay on top of the game, David. 
That's why he's down there in that spot. Help the umpires out. <laughs> to the right side, it's through for a base hit. Chu coming around third. Here comes Kiermaier's throw. The slide, he is out. Now, Kiermaier threw a one-hop strike, and Chu gunned down. Elvis into second on the throw. He's there now with two outs. Well, Kiermaier, by the time he got to the ball, he's not playing very deep. And so by the time he got to the ball, he's right in back a second base. He fired a strong throw. It looked like a short hop Molina. Molina made a nice pickup to be able to catch the ball and then the tag. But he's not playing that deep in right field. He charges it like a madman. He's right in back a second base. And the throw short hops Molina. He has no trouble catching it. He puts the tag on for the out. Yep. No, Joe Madden now after the man as you get another look. Tag uh, right on the left foot. And uh, good job of not getting in front of the plate until he had the ball by Jose Molina. That's how it's supposed to be done. Yep. So, pitching change as Joe Madden takes the ball from Joel Peralta. He wants Jeff Bellavo, the left hander, to come on. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this to Lovely Park in a 2 2 ball game. Jeff Bellavo, the left-hander, is on, and that's going to necessitate a move from Ron Washington, who goes to the bench. Mike Garp, the scheduled hitter, pulled back. And we've got Adam Rosales coming off as a pinch hitter. But first, here's Jeff Bellavo's number. Yeah, but Jeff Bellavo has been in nine games this year. He's had an interesting couple of years with the Rays. This is his fifth tour with the Rays this season, his ninth tour over the last two seasons. He's been here since July 22nd. Prior to that, in eight different stints with the Rays, they totaled 22 days. <laughs> Talk about going up and down. And Adam Rosales, a 326 average. Now his pinch hitting. Rosales, three home runs, 10 driven in. He's up there with the go ahead run out at second. Person of uh, Elvis Andrews. Rangers have come back to tie the ball game here in the seventh, and they're looking to take the lead. Two outs, 0-1 is the count. Now 0-2. Bellavo was a Ranger for a little while anyway. It was, uh, Rangers got him on the waiver wire from the Cubs in the uh, offseason between 2012 and 13. And then he was traded to the Rays by the Rangers at the end of spring training. 
in 2013. Inside, one ball and two strikes to Rosales. Rangers in this inning have put together four hits, a sacrifice fly, had a man thrown out at the plate, Shinsu Chu. Gunned down by Kevin Kiermeyer. Bellavo is ready, a check of second. Rosales fouls it back. Rangers have not had a whole lot of success pinch hitting, especially lately, but this year they're just 18 for 69. Rosales as a pinch hitter, 0 for 2. Elvis getting his lead from second, staring in, and Bellavo has the sign he wants. Another 1 2 pitch. Call strike three. Rosales got rung up, and he has gone on strikes. So the Rangers' seventh comes to a close, but they come back to tie the ball game. Two runs on four hits, one left. On to the eighth. It's now a 2 2 game. score the Beltray throw to Soto on the infield in and then in this last half inning Kevin Kiermaier cutting down Shinsu Chu at the plate to keep the ball game tied. So a pair of freaky fast deliveries brought to you by Jimmy John. And we head to the eighth inning and Neil Kotz has come out of the Ranger bullpen to take over on the hill. That was a good seven innings for Nick Tepish. He only gave up four hits. Unfortunately three of them came in the sixth inning within four batters and two of them were triples. But seven innings four hits a couple of runs did not walk a batter and struck out four. good solid outing for Nick. His last outing before that one five and two thirds at Chicago with no runs and one before that pretty good start against Oakland six innings three runs so. Three good starts. Put together by Nick. And starting to show that consistency that you're looking for. Neil Cox first pitch to Desmond Jennings is over for a strike. Jennings is one for three tonight. He had a triple leading off the sixth inning and scored the first run of the game and pops this pitch up. It's going to drift over the Ranger dugout back into the seats. And the count moves to nothing and two. And a new uh, first baseman for the Rangers, Mike Carp, pinch hit for by uh, Adam Rosales in that last half inning. And, uh, Rosales staying in the ball game at first. Cots okay's the sign, the 0-2 pitch. Jennings, along with a triple, is grounded out and flied out tonight. 
Rangers about hit the Rays 10 to 4 this evening. Both ball clubs with a pair of errors. Another foul ball to the right. And the count remains at 1 and 2. Now Nick Tepish tonight, seven innings pitched, four hits, two runs who were both earned. No walks, four strikeouts. Excellent work by the right-hander. That classifies itself, I think, as another very, very solid outing. I'm talking about the consistency. And, Tom, you mentioned a couple of times that uh, it's uh, three starts now in a row and four starts here at home in a row that uh, Nick Tepish has been very solid. Uh, he, he came into the game with two good starts under his belt. Also, this year, he's pitched much better at night than he has at day in the daytime, much better at home than he has on the road. So he had all those things going for him, and it added up to a good, solid start against Tampa Bay. Talk about taking positives out of starts and building on them for the next one. That's what Tepping has been able to do, I think, lately. Yep. And he'll have some more positives to work with. He made a lot of good pitches today. Yeah. Still one and two to Jennings. And another foul ball. O'Neill trying to work a couple of pitches in, left him out over the plate a bit. But all Jennings could do is foul him off. 35,000 on hand here tonight. 30, 35,642. Be exact. The announced attendance. Nice crowd for a Tuesday evening and seeing some pretty good baseball. Our Fox tracker showing you that uh, last pitch right at the top of the zone. Now the 1 2 again. This one's popped up and he will stay in play. And when it comes down, it'll be in Rubenet's glove. The door handles it. One gone. And let's go over to Jim Knox again, Jim. All right, Buzz, real quick time for the progressive fan of the game. Got the foot family in from Lubbock. This is Grandma and Grandpa, and you got Camp Gap. What's this about? Camp Gap, that's where we have a camp. It means Camp Grammy Joe and Pop. We get the grandkids together and have a great time and do a little Bible study. We decide to come watch the Rangers play this year. There we go. Good to have you out here. You guys having a good time? Yeah! yeah. All right, there you go. Here you go. Here's the shirt. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys have fun. All right, way to go. Camp Gap. There we go. <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa, good job. <laughs> ben Zobris, the hitter, he turns around a bat from the right side against uh, Neil Kotz, takes inside. Zobris tonight, 0 for 2, with the sacrifice fly. Dobras, two of his nine home runs and 10 of his 34 RBI as a right-handed hitter. Check swing, he went around, and uh, so says Joe West. That moves the count to one and two. Is Obris one of those rare hitters who walks as much as he strikes out? Two strikeouts tonight, that's rare. Coming into the game, 58 walks, 58 strikeouts. Good solid on base percentage, 374. Is that uh, Cutter on his fist foul? And it's still a ball and two strikes. Outfield plays Zobist around to the left, as is the infield. One of those guys that there's no uh, difference whether it's ground ball or fly ball. He pulls most of it. Pitch up and away to even the count at two and two. One out, base is empty in the top of the eighth inning. Elvis straightens up, fires the first, and gets Zobis by a half step. Elvis needed every bit of his arm strength to make that play in the hole. It wasn't a very hard hit ball. Our right, AT&T U-verse rewind. Nick Tepish tonight. That four strikeouts, and he had that uh, big curveball working pretty much at will. And whenever he wanted to drop that in, it was there. Back door with a slider and a good life on his fastball.
Well, Matt Joyce, the schedule hitter, pulled back, and Brandon Geyer, right-handed hitting outfielder, will pinch hit for him. First ball swinging into center field. Leonis Martin in a hurry, but he has to play it on a hop, and fortunately, he was able to get his body in front of it so it couldn't get by him. And Geyer aboard with a two-out pinch hit single. Yeah, Leonis is going to give this a shot. He's playing over in right center, so he's got a ways to go. He can't get to it, but he puts it right in the middle of his glove on the short hop. Luckily, he did, didn't kick off the side of him and allow Geyer to get to second base. Is that a dangerous play with two outs? Yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. In a tie ball game. You know, I think you, you want to determine whether you're going for it or not a little bit sooner so that when you decide you can't get it, you can stop in time to make an easy hop and get it into second base. And you're right, Buzz, with two outs, you want to keep that guy at second base. You take a chance like that and it kicks off the side, you put the go-ahead run in scoring position. Yeah, Ron Washington, the slow walk out to the mound. He has a right-hander, Roman Mendez, in the bullpen. Mendez had been up last inning. So he should uh, be ready if the skipper decides uh, that's the way he wants to go, and it is. He wants to bring Mendez in here to face Evan Longoria with the go-ahead run at first and two outs in the eighth inning. And Neil Kotz finished for the night after two-thirds of an inning. 24-year-old right-hander Roman Mendez will be coming in. We will take a timeout. We are back to Globe Live Park in a 2-2 ball game right after this. Top of the eighth, two outs in a 2 2 ball game here at Globe Life Park in Arlington as we welcome you back and get you ready for game three of this four game set between the Rays and the Rangers. And a couple of 321s going at it tomorrow. Evan Longoria with a 321 average versus these Rangers since 2010, which is the same average that Adrian Beltre has this season. This preview of game three of four brought to you by ATT Uverse, guys. All right, Dan, thank you. And, uh, we head to the outing for Roman Mendez, the big right-hander on now with one on and two out. Yeah, Roman is getting a good chance to pitch in meaning meaningful games on a regular basis. He's coming in anywhere from the sixth to the eighth inning and general, gen generally with a game on the line. And no exception right here. Pretty good numbers for Roman through 14 games. Worked on Sunday down in Houston, his last outing. He's facing Evan Longoria. And the first pitch is right on the outside corner. Strike one. Well, good test for him right here, trying to get Longoria for the last out of the eighth inning. Fourth place hitter for the Rays. Not having his best season, but still a dangerous hitter. Well, Longoria single to center his last time up. One for three tonight. Brandon Geyer, the runner at first after the two out single. Longoria rips one foul outside third. Beltre 
playing very close to the line. He's maybe a half step off the line. So if that ball is fair, Adrian's going to get it. Yeah, that was going to throw his glove at it, which he was about ready to do, I think. Yeah, it's going to have to be hit pretty hard to get between <laughs> the bag and him. Mendez now with an 0-2 advantage in the count. Right-hander agrees with Giovanni Soto. And Longoria pops it up. Shallow right field coming on. Shinsu Chu under it makes the catch. And Mendez gets Longoria. Well, the Rays get a base hit, but strand a runner. And after seven and a half, it's the Rangers two and the Rays two. many hits as the Rays, but the exact same number of runs in the 2-2 game here in the middle of the eighth inning. John Radigan here getting ready for Rangers Live, presented by eSurance. Mark McElmore, Pudge Rodriguez will be joining me here in the Captain Morgan Club as we bring you a complete post-game wrap-up, lots of post-game sound. Emily Jones will talk to Ron Washington. We will also hear more from Kenny Rogers. If you missed him when he was in the booth with Buzz and Tom, it was great stuff. We'll revisit some of that when we join you on Rangers Live immediately following the exciting conclusion of this one, guys. Back over to you. All right, John, thank you very much. Well, the uh, Rangers coming to bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning. 2-2 uh, two -two game, Adrian Beltre is one for three tonight. And we'll start things off against Jeff Bellabo. Adrian, uh, 321 average, exactly where he began play tonight. Bellabo just left the breaking ball hanging wide, one and one. Bellabo came on to get a strikeout of pinch hitter Adam Rosales to in the uh, Rangers seventh. Rangers had tied the ball game with a couple of runs, had the go-ahead run at second. And Rosales uh, called out on strikes. Two and one now to Beltre. Adrian, the team leader with both 17 home runs and 62 RBI. Man who is second in RBI, Alex Rios, not able to start tonight. He tweaked that right ankle again on uh, Sunday down in Houston. He's going to be out for a, a couple of more days. It's, the MRI showed uh, apparently no structural damage to the ankle, but uh, a pretty good sprain. Yeah, Wash, pre-game, sounding fairly optimistic in that regard he felt like you know if it was an important game and he had to play he could probably play right now but he wanted to not not rush it not take any chances. Well, Beltre now has a full count Adrian trying to get a board to start this inning Jim Aducey. He's 
waiting to be next, but he's been pulled back, and Daniel Robertson has grabbed a bat and come into the on-deck circle. Bellavo ready, and the payoff pitch to Beltre. Ball four. Adrian draws the leadoff walk. And with uh, Robertson coming up now, as soon as he's announced he's not going to come up, it's going to be Jim Aducey. And uh, what Ron Washington is figuring that uh, Aducey is going to be asked to butt. And Skipper doesn't want to waste one of his good right-handed bats in a bunting situation. More than likely, Aducey will be asked to lay down a sacrifice. Jim 0 for 3 tonight, a couple of strikeouts and a ground out. Longoria, the third baseman, uh, a step or so in front of the bag. He's not convinced completely that uh, Aducey is going to bunt. Now he's coming in a step or two. The bunt is down. It's a good one. Loney on to Forsyth covering at first. And the sacrifice goes 3 4. Nice job by Jim Aducey to get that bunt down. Beltre now in scoring position with one out. A very relaxed, calm approach to that sacrifice bunt. And he got down a perfect bunt. And just the fact that he went to the plate pretty much guaranteed that the bunt was going to be in order right there. He's, he's got his bat out in front of the plate, concentrating, knows what his job is. And here's a slow motion view of what it means to get the bunt down perfectly. Good fundamentals on that bunt. Well, if you're wondering what a, a perfectly executed uh, mechanics of a bunt are, that's a pretty good slow mo there for you to take a look at. Yeah, it sure was. Everything was uh, was done pretty well. Well, Joe Madden out to the mound. We've got J.P. Aaron Seabe, a right-handed hitting D.H. at the plate or coming to the plate, and Brad Boxberger, hard-throwing right-hander. Coming in for the bullpen. So another pitching change underway at Globe Life Park. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. $19.94 prices on select tickets and concessions for their game against the Royals on Sunday, August 24th. Plus, all adults 21 and older will receive one voucher good for a 16-ounce domestic draft beer at $19.94 prices. That's $3.50. Visit TexasRangers.com slash rollback and use the coupon code 1994. Rangers with the go-ahead run at second base, and the Rays turn to 26-year-old right-hander Brad Boxberger. Well, Boxberger's got some pretty sparkling statistics. First pitch is a strike. 
first among American relievers, third in the major leagues. He strikes out 14 and a half batters per nine innings. In his last 12 innings, he struck out 26 batters. Left-hand hitters are one for their last 50 against him. He's been tough to hit, and he's been striking most of them out. Yep. 40, 43 percent. He fires a strike to Aaron Sebia. It's nothing in, nothing in two. He had a game back on May 8th. He replaced David Price in the sixth inning with the bases loaded and nobody out. That was in Baltimore and struck out the side on nine pitches. <laughs> That's pretty much taking care, of, taking care of the job all by yourself. And call strike three here. Aaron Sebia is gone and he has a very questioning look to Joe West. That is out number two. So Boxberger on three pitches. Disposers of uh, Aaron Sebia. And JP must not have seen that ball very good. Ball's right down the middle of the plate. Uh, two gone now. Here's Leonis Martin, who has singled all three times that he has come up tonight. And Boxberger firing a strike. Boxberger's got one of those smooth deliveries that must look to the hitter like it's a lot faster than it really is. Not that he's lacking velocity. He's got 93, 94 so far in this game. It looks like it gets on the hitter even faster than that. And fastball changeup primarily, and he has an excellent changeup. Now that's... Uh, only seeing a guy one time in a ball game, that's got to be that's tough to adjust to. Sure is. Sneaky mid 90s fastball and an unhittable changeup. That's a pretty good combination. Oops. There's that changeup. One just stopped. Yeah. Somebody had a string tied on it and pulled <laughs> it straight down. <laughs> Nothing in two, Billy Onis. This year, Rangers now down to 242 with runners in scoring position. Adrian Beltre carrying the go ahead run out there at second with two outs here in the eighth inning. 0-2. The owners tonight, three singles. First one went to left field. Good job of hitting there. That's when he turned on a little bit. Pulled that in right. And the other one, he went the other way again. Well, going from uh, line to line tonight. Owners Martin, three for three. And he just looks at a pitch outside. By a hair. One ball, two strikes. Boxberger from my hometown, Fullerton, California. He also went to the University of Southern California. He and his dad, dad played there back in the 70s. Martina drive, center field. On his horse, Jennings still going back against the wall. And he makes the catch. Desmond Jennings full out. Made the grab on a shot off of Leonis Martin's bat. Smashed into the padding and held on. And the Rays escape. The Rangers are robbed. What a play by Jennings. The Beltre left stranded. We have finished eight. We are deadlocked at two.
to score. It's about the experience. Oh, the Rangers almost had a great experience. Leonis Martin had a bid for extra bases robbed away from him, stolen away from him by Desmond Jennings in that eighth inning. He waited on a high changeup and drove it all the way to the wall. About halfway there, it looked like Jennings wasn't going to be able to get to it, but he just outran the ball, was fearless against the wall, caught it right in the middle of his glove and took the collision into the wall and hung on to it. Beautiful play by Jennings. Took the go-ahead run away from the Rangers. Well, a face plant right against the, against the padding. And our phantom cam showing you that ball right in the sweet spot for Leonis. Martin has been swinging the back great tonight. Has been swinging the back great. That almost capped off a perfect night. Yep. Neffy on for his 14th game. Not a save situation. Trying to shut them down in the ninth. Get a run in the bottom of the ninth and pick up a win instead of a save. And the first pitch to uh, James Loney. The fastball that's fouled off the other way. Nothing in one. Loney, a 284 hitter. Go ahead, uh, no, I was just going to say we were talking about Neffy in the pregame show. And he's done a good job. Occasionally he's come into a game without his best fastball, but he's gotten the job done by using his complementary pitches pretty well. And he gets a pop up from Loney. Left side of the diamond. Elvis and. Uh, Adrian Beltre. Beltre is still looking up there. <laughs> Elvis makes the catch for out number one. And then he had a save where he had his mid-90s fastball. 94 as high as 96. So seen a little bit of everything from Neffy. Had the one blown save in Cleveland. Two-run lead and David Murphy hit the two-run homer on a pitch that came back over the plate. He was trying to throw it away. But for the most part, Neffy's done a good job. No one out. Now the D.H. Sean Rodriguez steps to the plate. The pitch outside for ball one. Rodriguez tonight. One for three. He's reached on an error. He is singled and grounded a short. 229 the season average. Police with a 1-0. Two balls and no strikes. He's getting a little bit of the uh, dirt off the mound. Keep that hand dry. Gets the sign from Giovanni Soto. Two and one now after the foul ball. Rodriguez, got to be careful. He's got some pop. Jake McGee, the uh, I think it's closest thing that the Rays have to a closer right now. Yeah, he's been doing most of it lately. Yeah, they've used a committee, but he has been the one lately. 12 saves. Two and two. Rodriguez a little disappointed that he <laughs> went after that high fastball from police. Nephew not unhappy, though. One out, base is empty. Two and two the count as Feliz sets. Got him swinging. You want to swing at one high one, I'll give you a chance right. to swing at another one. With two for the price of one. Two gone now, it's Logan Forsythe. Forsythe is 0 for 2 tonight. He is grounded out to short and lined to short. Also had a sacrifice bunt. Forsyth, the average at 243 is Feliz. It's the outside corner with strike one. Target set, low and away, and Feliz gets it with a breaking ball. 
And the Valley out in front of the count, no balls and two strikes. A lot of strikes. Seven out of the nine pitches have uh -huh. been strikes. A little help from the hitters. They weren't all strikes without swings, but that's the way they registered because the swings that the pitches out of the strikes on. Well, now getting behind the Lees and the Rangers. The 0 2 pitch. We'll try it again. Now, Forsyth mired in a pretty long 0 for. He's now at 0 for 13. Call strike three. A good inning for Niftali Feliz. A couple of strikeouts. A one, two, three frame. We're going to the bottom of the night. It'll be Soto, Odor, and Chu. The Rangers and Rays tied at two. This is Rangers Baseball on Fox Sports Southwest. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. By AT&T Uber's TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT, mobilizing your world. And by your Texas Ford dealer. The Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event, now playing at a Ford dealer near you. Let's go back to the seventh inning. And Giovanni Soto with that ringing double off the wall. And then Jitsu Chu with the double to right center field over the leap of Kevin Kiermaier. That tied the ball game. And Giovanni Soto leading off against Brad Boxberger here in the ninth inning. The Rangers had a couple of chances to plate that third run in the ball game. Elvis had a base hit to right field, but Kiermaier gunned a runner down at the plate. And the last inning with a man on base ended with that beautiful play by Jennings in center field on the long ball right to the base of the wall by Leonis Martin. So two great defensive plays kept the Rangers from scoring the go-ahead run. And a fly ball to right field. Coming on, Kiermaier, plenty of time to get there. Soto retired, one gone for Rugnet Odor. Odor, the uh, Rangers on the board with the first run. He drove home the run with a sacrifice fly in that seventh inning. So he is two for two. Now with 25 runs driven in. Door batting in that number nine slot. When you look at seven, eight, and nine tonight for the Rangers. Martin, Soto, and Odor. And Odor up the middle.
the uh, shortstop Zobrist able to glove it and throw him out. Two gone. See those, those three hitters with six hits between them. Lador almost made it a seven. No base is empty, and Shinsu Chu up. Chu with that booming double to right center field. Drove home the tying run in the seventh inning. One for four tonight. Well, Boxberger's got an excellent ERA. Talked about his other numbers. He's only given up 11 runs, but he's given up six home runs, so slightly prone to the home run. Compared to his other stats, he is anyway. Almost gave up, gave up one to Martin, that's yep. for sure. Yes, he did. Jew got tied up by that Boxberger fastball, and it's one and one. Other than the double, Chu tonight has popped out, lined out, and struck out. Rangers all up in that uh, top step, hoping for a celebration. One and two. Jinsu just trying to get aboard here in the ninth inning with two outs. And uh, our Fox tracker showing you that uh, the Chu zone out there. Yep, taking over from David Murphy this year. One two pitch. Got him swinging. Well, Boxberger gets a one two three innings. Retired all five that he's faced. We are going to go two extra innings here tonight. The Rangers two and the Rays two on Fox Sports Southwest. Presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Feed your wild side. The Rangers, uh, for the third time this year, going to extra innings here at home. The Rangers this year, one in four in bonus baseball. They are one and one here at home. While the uh, Tampa Bay Rays are five and five overall, three and three on the road in extra inning games. Neftali Feliz out to uh, work his second inning. He'll face Jose Molina in the first pitch. Is a ball. 1-0. And Neffy had a nice quick top of the ninth. He only threw 11 pitches. Nine out of the 11 pitches were strikes. So watch is very comfortable sending him back out for the 10th inning. Damn, good fastball tonight. Not necessarily 96 or 97 miles an hour, but getting swings and misses at yep. it. Yeah, he is. He got two strikeouts in the ninth inning. Well, he's started Jose Molina off at one and one. Brown ball. That's into left field. A base hit. Well, Molina aboard with a leadoff single here in the tenth inning. And uh, we're going to have a pinch runner for Molina. 
Cole Figueroa, who played uh, second base in last night's game, is now the pinch runner. He's carrying the go-ahead run at first base with nobody out. Well, Figueroa with good speed at first. And the number nine hitter, Kevin Kiermeyer, is coming to the plate. Kiermaier tonight, 0 for 3. He has struck out and twice grounded out. The bunt is down. It's a good one to Rosales. Underhands, and it's dropped by Odor, and everybody is safe. It looked, it looked like the way Adam charged the ball that he had a play at second base. He chose not to, and that's fine if you're not comfortable going to second. Get the out at first, which he did. And then Rubnet just didn't catch the ball, didn't catch the foot first. Adam very aggressively goes after the ball and looked like he had a shot. Okay, fine, get the one out. Rubnet slaps at the ball and missed it. Very unusual play. See, Elvis at shortstop felt like there was a play at second base. Adam chose to go to first where they should have gotten one, but they didn't. Well, that goes down as a sacrifice and an E4 on the missed, uh, the missed catch. Now here's Desmond Jennings. He tries to butt, pops it up. But that will go back and over the screen. Nothing in one. And the Rangers now with three errors tonight. So far, they have not had one lead directly to a run. Other than the, uh, after the triple, and the throwing error that he scored, but then, then was followed up by a base hit, which made it an earned run anyway. Back in the fifth inning, sixth inning, excuse me. Jennings again trying to butt, and it's fouled to the first base side. No, no balls and two strikes now. Jennings not able to get the bunt down. We'll see if Joe Madden wants his uh, leadoff hitter to try it a third time. Figueroa, the pitch runner, at second. Kevin Kiermaier at first. Both of them very speedy. Feliz waiting for Jennings to get back in the box. Neffy is ready. A check of the runners. 0 oh 2. See if the Rangers can make him, meaning Desmond Jennings, pay for it now by turning a double play. Anderson Odor up the middle. Now that double play down. Still got uh, Rosales and Beltre up even with the bags at th first and third. Another 0 2 pitch. Trying to bunny, bunch through it. Yeah, throw to second, not in time. So Jennings. Trying to bunt, and he strikes out. A big out number one. Well, it, I'm not sure whether the bunt was on or whether he chose to do it on his own, but 0-2, he swung away and fouled the ball off. It looked like the bunt was off like it normally is with two strikes. But then he tries to bunt, bunts underneath the ball, and ends up striking out. So very unproductive at bat and disappointing at bat if you're Desmond Jennings. And a big strikeout for Neffy trying to pitch out of a jam right here. So that is out number one. Now Ben Zobrist, who will turn around and hit from the left side once again. Makes the first pitch for strike one. And Police popping that in there at 96. Well, Neffy had a little bit extra that he hadn't uh, broken out. Zobrist 0 for 3 with a sacrifice fly tonight. Figaro at second, Kiermaier at first. And a double play grounded at Elvis. Odor back to first wide, it pulls, and they got it. It was wide, but Rosales able to keep the toe on the bag, apparently. At least according to Marty Foster, the first base umpire, and Joe Madden quickly out. They head over to first base. The Rangers are pretty sure they're leaving the field. 
I think if Adam had any doubt as the first baseman, he would have stayed out there. This is what uh, players would look at him that foot still in contact with the bag. Yep. As Rosales caught the ball. We'll see if uh, that determination is what the uh, Rays video folks see. And they're going to go to the headsets. They'll take another angle, overturn that. This one, maybe. He dragged it right over the top of the base with the ball in his glove. No, Joe West and uh, Marty Foster, the crew chief and the first base umpire who made the call. Under headset now, they are hooked up with uh, the replay command center in New York. Ray's challenging this. They have the challenge still in hand. Marty Foster, uh, the one talking to the folks in New York. And the crowd here at Globe Life uh, seeing on the, the big screen a couple of the angles that we showed you already. And to their delight, it looked like Adam Rosales kept that uh, toe on the bag. It's on the side of the bag, and then it looks like he drags it right over the top of the bag with the ball in his glove. We'll have to wait here to see if that's what the uh, umpires in New York see when they look at uh, look at all this. Here's another angle. Just from center field, you can get an idea of where. Ooh. Unless he missed it, it sure looked like he had the ball in his glove and he dragged his foot right over the top of the yeah, bag. I would agree with you. As you mentioned, the uh, call on the first now, it was a completed double play. The way it was called on the field. There has to be clear and convincing evidence now to overturn that call. And here's uh, one final angle with our phantom cam. Ball is in the glove now, and it sure looks like that foot is up against the bag right there. And if it's not, it is now. Dragging it across the top. And if it's, if it's not on the bag, I don't know how they can overturn it because you really can't see it. Yeah. Yeah, we can't. I can't guarantee it was on the bag, but if the call is out, it sure can't be shown that he didn't have his foot on the bag. Yeah, we will get this uh, get this call momentarily. He is out. Well, the double play, six four three, and that ends a very big threat by the Rays in the tenth. No runs, a hit, an error, one man left. Rangers come to bat in the bottom of the tenth, tied at two. the tenth inning we're coming about now on the bottom of the tenth and facing hard throwing left hander Jake McGee well, we're talking about box burgers statistics and how spectacular they were McGee's might not be quite as spectacular in some ways but they're pretty remarkable in others his ERA is better at 138 
He has 70 strikeouts in 52 innings. Has not given up a home run. That's pretty impressive. An opponent's batting average of only 180. So Boxberger had a few more strikeouts. Had also given up six home runs. McGee has a better ERA and hasn't given up a home run. And the Rangers will have the uh, two, three, and four hitters up facing Jake McGee here. Elvis Andrews to lead things off. Adam Rosales and Adrian Beltre to follow. Elvis tonight, a couple of hits. Four official trips, two for four tonight. That batting average now up to 274. Medea, 28 year old, out of San Jose, California, goes to work and fires a strike. Elvis showing bunt and took it. Elvis, a pair of singles. One in the first, one in the seventh. And McGee misses low and inside at 97. Left-hander back to the plate. And Elvis fouls it away to the right. McGee taken in the fifth round of the uh, 2004 draft. Made his uh, major league debut with the Rays back in 2010. Last two years, he's been pretty much a workhorse. 69 games in 2012, 71 last year. Two and two now. Uh, Nick Tepish, great night tonight. Uh, seven innings. Two runs on four hits, no walks, four strikeouts. Another solid outing for the 25-year-old from Missouri. And Elvis making McGee work a little bit. The left-hander okays the sign. Back to the plate. And Elvis spoiling another fastball. McGee pumping him in, and Elvis staying alive. Last year, according to uh, Pitch FX data, Jake McGee had the second highest fastball velocity in baseball, 96.3 miles an hour, and that was behind Aroldis Chapman, who was a couple of miles an hour faster. And you can see by the readings in this at bat that uh, McGee doesn't leave much in the bag when he goes out there. Elvis back in waiting. McGee is set. Another 2 2. Chopper slowly hit out to short. And Zobris throws out his counterpart. One gone. For Adam Rosales. Adam had a couple of home runs against one of the best left-handed starters in the American League and baseball in general. Chris Sale, hard thrower. And he's got a chance to face another hard-throwing lefty, one of the better left-handed relievers in the league. Let me take him deep. Be the first one to do it all year if he does. <laughs> and McGee misses low and outside for ball one. Rosales came on as a pinch hitter for Mike Carp in the seventh inning. He was called out on strikes. McGee back to the plate. And the pitch is low. Rosales. Seven for his last 18 times to the plate now. He was back over five games plus one at bat here tonight. During that time, he's had two home runs and five RBI. And as Tom told you, those came against Chris Sale. 
Well, he had one in there to work with up a bit, and he fouled it straight back. He was right on that one. Two and one. Yep, had a good swing at it, 97 miles an hour. High and tight, three balls and a strike. Now if Rosales can get aboard, it would give Adrian Beltre an opportunity to face McGee with the winning run aboard. See McGee uh, pretty consistent in 97. 3-1 pitch. That's high ball four. Well, Rosales works a one-out walk. Rangers have that winning run at first base. Adrian Beltre is coming up. Third baseman, Adrian Beltre. The skipper Joe Madden in his ninth year at the helm of the Tampa Bay Rays. Kind of a helpless feeling time for the uh, skipper. You got the guy in there that you want and he walks somebody. Now he's got to face Adrian Beltre and he can't do a thing about it. Beltre one for three with a walk tonight. single back in the sixth inning and uh, ensuing error put runners at second and third for the Rangers Takes high ball one that was with one out of the six in the scoreless game or excuse me on the Tampa just taking a two nothing lead in that six the Rangers had an opportunity to answer and left runners at second and third well, if it's a hard line drive in the gap in left center field, it should score. Adam, there's a big gap over there with Jennings playing in right center field. Off the end of the bat to right field. It's falling in a hurry. Kiermaier coming on, makes the catch and throws back. And they got it. Second base umpire, Gabe Morales, came down to make the call at first. And he said Loney kept his foot on the bag as he received the ball from Kiermaier. And Rod Washington... Going out now. This is always one to the naked eye that looks like he's off the bag. And more often than not, when you see it happen afterwards, he just barely kept his foot on. It looked like he had it. If his foot was on the bag, he had the ball. It's up to tell if it was touching the bag or not, though. Let's see if we can see from this angle. Well, Adrian kind of in the way of our view on that one, but here we get a different angle. Yeah, he's out. Sure looks like it. That's almost a carbon copy of the one we had last half inning. Where a ball in the glove and toes still on the bag. Now there's a good angle of it right there. Well, and he's got the ball and the uh, foot still appeared to be on the bag. So again, Joe West and Gabe Morales, the second base umpire, who was over making the call, and they get the... Uh, Opinion from New York that the call is confirmed. It is a double play. It goes 9-3 on the putout, and the Rangers are gone in the 10th. We're going to the 11th. It's the Rangers 2 and the Rangers 2 on Fox Sports Southwest.
feed your wild side. Now we head to the 11th inning here at uh, Globe Live Park, and Sean Thomason has come out of the Ranger bullpen to take over on the mound. Natalie Feliz, uh, two shutout innings with just one hit and three strikeouts. Now it's up to Sean Tolleson. Yeah, Sean, with good numbers all season long in his last eight games, he's featuring a 112 ERA. Going to face the middle of the order. Geyer, who had pinch hit for Joyce. Geyer pinch hit in the eighth inning. Had a two-out single. Stayed in the ballgame, took over in left field. So Geyer, Longoria, and Loney. First three to do the swing in against Sean Tolleson. And the right-hander's first pitch is hit very sharply, but right at Elvis. In the dirt, and Rosales able to dig it out. Nice play by Adam Rosales. One gone. Third baseman, Evan Longoria. Backhand on the short hop there. That was, looked like he had did have plenty of time, took his time. Looked like he was going to make an accurate throw, just threw it a little bit low. Got bailed out by Adam. Here's Longoria. It's that first pitch off the plate for ball one. Adam Longoria tonight, one for four. Had a uh, sixth inning single. Other than that, it's been three fly balls to the outfield. Tolleson back to him. And Longoria towering fly ball on a left. Aducey is back, but he stopped midway back on the warning track. And makes the catch. Well, some heart palpitations as that ball left the bat, but it stayed in the yard. Two gone. First baseman, James Lowe. Just got underneath it a little bit. Ducey back there waiting for it to come down. No two outs here in the 11th. Now James Loney, the first baseman, comes in. Loney 0 for 4 tonight. Tolleson with the sign and the first pitch. Two hopper to Rosales. He will race to the bag and wins that one. And it's a pretty quick inning, a four pitch inning for Sean Tolleson. Three up, three down. Rangers coming up in the 11th. 2 2.
it's also Nolan Ryan Beef Dollar Hot Dog Night. You get all the Nolan Ryan Beef hot dogs you want for just a buck each. Get your tickets by calling 972 Rangers or you can go online to TexasRangers.com. We'll see you tomorrow night. All the way from Sydney. Is that Sydney, Texas? Doesn't look like it. I don't think so. Good day, mate. <laughs> Noxie mi missed them tonight. I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah. I thought they had to register when they came in the ball game. <laughs> they were from Australia with Noxie. Uh, Jim Adusi is going to be pinch hit for. Daniel Robertson will come out and lead off the 11th inning, pinch hitting against Jake McGee. Well, Adusi ended up going uh, 0 for 3, but he did have a sacrifice bunt. Robertson steps in, hitting at 287. He takes McGee's first fastball for strike one. Well, McGee coming in had, had had been in 56 games, 52 innings. So pitching multiple innings is something he hasn't done a lot. But he only threw 12 or 13 pitches last inning, so it's not that big a deal. Late in the game, manager's going to stretch out their best guys as long as they can. And McGee jumps out in front of the count. No balls, two strikes to Robertson. Check swing and pitch just off the inside corner. A ball and two strikes. Daniel over his last 16 games has hit 378. Couldn't hold it up. And that fastball just uh, away from him. Couldn't make contact. One gone. He's the first strikeout for Jake McGee. J.P. Aaron Sebia. Let's see if J.P. can walk off with one here. Aaron Sebia, 0 for 4 tonight. He had 0 for 4 in his career against Jake McGee. First ball swinging, pops it up. Around the plate in foul territory. Casale makes the catch. That is out number two. Kurt Casale stayed in the ball game. For Jose Molina behind the plate. Well, here's Leonis Martin, who's three for four. All three hits tonight, singles. Last time up in the eighth inning, he sent Desmond Jennings all the way to the padding in deepest center field to haul down a shot. Fastball to the outside corner for strike one. McGee back to the plate. Tuned that one up to 98, and uh, Leonis fouled it back. A pretty, you got a pretty good idea what's coming when he throws it. He doesn't yeah. mix in much else other than the fastball. Doesn't need to. It's a dominating fastball. You know, one of those guys that has nice, easy, fluid motion. Ball's got to jump on you along with getting there at 98. Tapper up the mound and through the center field. Leonis Martin carrying the winning runners aboard his fourth hit of the night. And that may be the best at bat of them all against a left-hander like Jake McGee. Yeah, what what a night for Martin. Struggling coming into the game. Three for his last 30. The only out he's made was a spectacular catch by Jennings at the base of the wall with his back to the plate in center field. Tremendous night. Well, Leonis Martin, his first career four-hit game tonight. He has gone four for five, and... We'll see now with Soto at the plate if Leonis could maybe swipe second. He is the winning run, and uh, McGee going to make sure that he doesn't get a walking lead. Martin this year with 19 stolen bases, but he's been caught nine times. Kirk Casale, the catcher, and it's not uh, 
Jose Molina back there. McGee trying to make sure that Leonis Martin doesn't have that walking leap. You're talking about that, Tom, about a little variation. How about a four mile an hour <laughs> difference? That's been it. <laughs> I don't think we've seen that this year. From a high of uh, 98 to a low of 94. That's, uh, of course, we haven't seen anything other than a fastball either. No. Giovanni is one for four tonight. I don't think we've seen anybody throw 23 straight fastballs. I'm betting on 24. I sure would be if I was the hitter. There goes Leonis. The pitch is inside. The throw is wide. And Martin gets himself into scoring position. He is 20th stolen base of the year. Oh, no chance. He had, a, he had a good jump and he was flying. Molina. Or Molina's not catching. He came out Casale, of the game. Yeah. Who's catching? Kirk Casale. Casale really didn't have much of a chance. That ball was down. Tough pitch to catch and throw on. And with a jump and the speed that Martin has, he really didn't have a chance. He did a nice job of catching the ball and quickly transferring it to his hand to throw, but yeah. just didn't have a chance. Well, now it's uh, Giovanni Soto with a count of two balls and no strikes. The winning run at second base here in the 11th inning. A 2 2 game. McGee, a check of second. Low and inside, three balls and no strikes. Well, Soto hitting in the ace slot, and with first base open, you have Rugnet Odor, a left handed hitter in the on deck circle. You may not. See Jake McGee really excited about throwing a strike. Joe Madden entrusting McGee and Casale to come up with the right pitches. Fastball down the middle, three and one. And Giovanni back in with the idea that well, they're going to go ahead and come right at me. So he can get himself geared up for that hot, hard fastball. Leonis Martin, the winning run. Out there at second base. McGee checks it. Chopper to third. Longoria across the diamond. Loney digs it out of the dirt. And that will do it for the Rangers. They fail to score in the 11th. The no runs on a hit. They strand a runner. We're going to the 12th here at Globe Live Park. The Rangers 2 and the Rays 2. The Rays got it to the sixth, a leadoff triple, and then a sacrifice fly by Ben Zobrist. Then it was uh, Matt Joyce 
pocketing a ball for a triple into the left field corner. Ruben Odor trying to nail it, threw the ball away, so Joy scored. Then the Rangers came back in the seventh. It was a sacrifice fly by Odor to plate the first run. And then a double off the bat of Chu to tie the ball game as Soto scored. And we uh, are still deadlocked at two as we head to the 12th inning. John Rodriguez starting things off against Sean Tolleson. No balls and a strike. Tolleson had a very quick four pitch. 11th inning. He fires just outside. One ball and one strike to Rodriguez. Rodriguez won for four tonight. Fifth inning single. Also grounded out and uh, struck out this evening. Tolleson with that high set. The pitch fouled away to the right. Rangers tonight, two runs on 11 hits. The Rays, two runs on six hits. Rangers have committed three errors, and the Rays have committed two. Rays were the third best fielding club in the American League coming into play tonight. Pitch foul into and out of Giovanni Soto's glove. It remains a ball and two strikes. Dawson peering in for the sign. He's ready to go. Ground ball to third. Beltre gobbled that up. Surrounded it, as a matter of fact. And fires the first. That is out number one. Let's go to Jim Knox. Jim? All right, here he is. Uh, Chase, he comes all the way in from Sydney, Australia, to watch your Rangers. How'd you become a Ranger fan? Uh, I live with Texans back in Australia, and they indoctrinated me to become a Rangers fan. There we go. I understand that's your very first Major League game. What do you think? Uh, it's electrifying. I can't imagine anything better. All you're looking for is what now? Uh, uh, Rangers win and a walk-off. There we go. Good day, mate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good day. Good day. Good day. All right. <laughs> I knew, I knew Noxie couldn't yeah, resist no. that one. <laughs> he was right in his element there. Oh, goodness. That's hitting it off the sweet part of the bat right there. That is. No vibration on that contact. <laughs> Logan Forsythe, the hitter. One ball and no strikes to him. Now one and one on the foul ball. Forsythe tonight, 0 for 3 with the sacrifice bunt. He's extend, he extended that 0 for to an 0 for 14 as he faces Tolleson. Average down to 242. John ready to go. One and two. Forsyth taking a little time getting back in the box. Now he's ready. The next pitch from Tolleson. And another foul ball. Rays have played uh, extra innings now in three of their last five ball games. Two of the uh, three games over the weekend at Wrigley Field went uh, overtime. Call strike three. Tolleson. Painting the outside corner. And Forsyth caught window shot. Five up, five down for Sean. With a strikeout. Minimum amount of pitches, only 14 pitches. No doubt about the strike right in the middle of the plate, all the way in the strike zone. Now that is two out for Tollison. Five up, five down. Kurt Casale. The catcher, a 147 average. And he fouls off that first pitch. 
Tom Foley, the uh, third base coach, knocking that one down and then tossing it to a fan. Sally started last night's game. No home runs, one RBI, making his first foray into the major leagues this year with the Rays. One and one. Donaldson's next pitch. Two and one the count. John Donaldson, the Baylor X, having a very solid 2014 campaign for the Rangers, his hometown club. He's from Allen. Fires a strike to even things up. Dawson studying the signs. He is ready to go. The 2-2. Pop foul back into the seats. We'll try it again. Well, Sean, after a very quick four-pitch, the 11th inning, now has worked uh, 15 pitches here in the 12th. Another 2-2 is on the way. That ball's hit high and deep to left field. Down the line, long run for Robertson in the corner. He leaps up and makes the catch. <laughs> he had a long way to get that one. Daniel Robertson had to run about a 40-yard sprint, and he tracked it down in the corner. A great running play. Daniel Robertson and the side is retired in one, two, three fashion with an asterisk on the three. Robertson going forever to track that down. We'll go to the bottom of the 12th, a 2 2 game. Mesmerized by what's going on out here. Daniel Robertson shook out, shook him out of their uh, lethargy a little bit with a great running catch. Daniel Robertson tracking down that uh, rocket off the bat of Kurt Casale to end the top of the 12th. And now the Rangers coming to bat and they will face Grant Balfour here in the bottom. And another look at Daniel Robertson going way into the corner. 
Well, he had to stay with that one. He's getting close to the wall. What a beautiful play. <laughs> guys with a front row seat on that catch. <laughs> so Robertson and the Rangers now back in. Robertson talking to Dave Magadan getting set uh, maybe for an at bat here in the 12th inning. Brad Balfour on the hill. We saw Balfour last night. And he throws a strike to Odor. Now Balfour struggled with his command a little bit last night, but then pitched his way out of it. But he has walked 35 batters in 44 innings. Command has been a problem as he shoots two straight right down the middle of the plate. Not a problem so far for him. You know, last night, uh, <clears throat> Balfour walked back to back hitters in the ninth inning. Odor fouls it away. A 2 2 game. Rangers with the 11 hits. The Rays with six hits. Rubin and Odor, two for three with a sacrifice fly tonight. That pitch uh, just a little bit short. Kirk Casale uh, taking the worst part of that pitch. And Balfour is going to go in and make sure he's all right. Not quite as good. This year as last season 26 runs and 47 appearances this year. Fewer runs and a lot more appearances last year. Balfour installed installed as a closer early in the season and relinquished that. And as Tom told you they Ray's kind of going with a closer by committee now and I don't think Balfour's on that committee. Yet. I don't think he's gotten back in the committee yet. Odor pops another pitch foul. That will be back into the seats. McGee is getting most of the chances now, but you'd have to think next in line would be Boxberger with the way he's been yeah. throwing. One and two to Odor. Leading off the bottom of the 12th inning in a 2-2 game. Call strike three. Odor disgusted the Shaking his head as he walks back to the Ranger dugout. And in the general vicinity of the strike zone. Uh, one away, now back to the top of the Ranger order. Shinsu Chu, one for five. Had the RBI double in the seventh and takes the first pitch knee high for strike one. Chu one for four in his career against Grant Balfour. A ball and a strike. That's the pitch for Balfour that he just hasn't had much command of that hard breaking ball. When you're bouncing like that, you're probably trying to make it too perfect to pitch, too hard to pitch. And Chu rips one to the right side, off the glove, and then recovered by Forsyth to throw him out. Boy, a very nice reaction play by Forsyth, the second baseman. Yeah, he did a good job. It was a hard hit smash. One hopper. Got the glove on it. Blocked it. Stayed with it. Keeps his eye on it. Bare hands it. Gets a grip on it. Fires over to first. No two away. And now Elvis will come to the plate. Andrews is uh, two for five tonight. Off speed, low and outside for ball one. Elvis a single in the first, a single in the seventh. He has had very little luck against Grant Balfour, just one for 12 in his career. Watching that one all the way in, it's strike one.
Balfour, the sixth pitcher used tonight by Joe Madden. And Elvis, a chopper to the left side. Short hop nicely by uh, Evan Longoria, and that'll do it. Rangers out in order. Balfour gets the job done in the 12th. We're going to the 13th. It's the Rangers 2 and the Rays 2. And the Rays, let's make it a lucky one for the Rangers. 2-2 now as we head to the 13th inning. John Radigan here with Mark McLemore and Pudge Rodriguez. And uh, we've been enjoying the drama and, I guess, for a little while here, the lack of action. Uh, we'd like a little more action, maybe a little less drama at this point. Let's we walk all, it off. We only want action in the bottom half of the inning. That's exactly. it. This inning, 13th inning, 13 now? Are we 13th? Yeah, 13th. Bottom yeah. of 13. That's when we want some action. Absolutely. Yeah, it's I time mean, to do it, right? Next inning, not this one. Next yeah, inning. next half inning, we're going to do it. We'll sit here and watch it with you guys. Hey, where, <laughs> where's the guacamole? <laughs> it's, gone. It. Yeah. it's gone. It's Ranger. It's gone. We did have it, but it's now gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> they didn't catch you eating it tonight, Matt. Did not catch me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, new pitcher for the Rangers. It's right-hander Scott Baker on the hill. And he will face Kevin Kiermaier to start off the Rays 13th. And Kiermaier pops up the first pitch. Elvis a long run over and makes the catch in fair territory. Four out number one. Well, Baker gets an out on one pitch. And we'll take him back to the top of the order for Desmond Jennings. But other than the two scoring innings where both teams bunched a bunch of hits together, the Rays haven't had many hits, but they had three out of four hitters in the sixth inning. And the Rangers had four hits out of five batters in their scoring inning. Other than that, there has not been much in the way of offense in this game. Desmond Jennings a hit in five trips. He tripled and scored in the sixth for Tampa. The Rays uh, with only six hits. They had uh, two triples in that two-run sixth. And Baker gets a foul ball to make it one ball and one strike. And Jennings, a 242 average as he faces the 32-year-old right-hander Scott Baker. Baker out of Shreveport, Louisiana, and Oklahoma State. Scott peering in for the sign. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch. 2-1. and one. Other than the uh, triple for Jennings, he has struck out, grounded out, flied out, and popped out. You know, a little bit of everything for the uh, Rays center fielder tonight. Kind of off the uh, trademark out to the left center. That's where Daniel Robertson is stationed. Two gone. For 
Ten straight retired by the Ranger bullpen. Yeah, ben Zobris will come to the plate. Zobris has been held in check tonight. He is 0 for 4 with a sacrifice fly. Seventeen at bats against uh, Scott Baker for Zobris. Only a 235 average the result. One ball, no strikes. <laughs> Be careful with Zobris in this situation. He has some pop. Nine home runs for the year. It's that fastball right down the middle. One and one. Baker to the wind. Two balls and a strike. Ranger outfield playing deep. They're going to try to keep the ball in front of them. Prevent uh, Zobris from getting a double if they possibly can. Infield, as you saw, a step or so around to the right side. And that pitch off the outside corner. Three balls and a strike. Well, Zobrist, Zobrist is able to keep this inning alive. Brandon Glyer, the left fielder, is waiting to be next. Three and two. I think Zobrist would like to have a do-over on that one. That was pretty much uh, in his wheelhouse. Zobris back on the box. Scott Baker looking in for the sign. Now the payoff pitch. It's well out of play behind home plate. Baker with a new baseball and Giovanni Soto. And that pitch fouled down. Well, Scott Baker got the first two outs and Kiermaier and uh, Desmond Jennings relatively quickly and uh, now Zobris is making him work for the final out. Another 3-2 pitch is coming. Yeah. Swing, call, strike three. Baker gets a strikeout, a 1-2-3-13. Rangers coming back, looking for a little bit of a shamrock. 2-2 to -two score.
13th here at Globe Life Park in Arlington. And guys, you know, sometimes when you play long baseball games or you watch long baseball games, cover long baseball games, delirium sets in and also you result to snacking. So I just wanted to let you guys know what I've been doing in the extra innings. Ooh. I've consumed an entire bag of pistachios. And Tom, this one's for you. It's a, a big bag of nothing, which also happens to be the name of my fantasy football team. Whoa. Grief, wow. are you Been ready? Yeah, I don't think so. You've got a pretty, pretty reputable team. Yeah. So, anyway, I just wanted to fill you guys in. I know you've been dying to know what's been going on down here in the camera well. So It's nice now to see you know. you're eating healthily. Yes. I was expecting Good. more than that, though, Em. I, I thought a lot more than that would be going on down there. Well, uh, we're, we're if, in case we have extra, more extra innings, I, I'm saving, saving some stuff for later. For right. sure. For sure. <laughs> All right. Adam Rosales leading off the uh, 13th for the Rangers. Grant Balfour misses inside. One ball and one strike. Rosales, since entering the ball game in the seventh, has gone uh, 0 for 1. He walked last time up. And he had a well, rip at that one and fouled it back. A hanger to rip, too. Well, Balfour throwing a lot more strikes tonight than he did last night. He's thrown 15 pitches. 11 of them tonight have been strikes. They're trying to get something going. Be nice to get the leadoff hitter on right here. Get the fans going. One and two. Balfour reading the signs. Back to the plate. Two and two now. Be a good time for Balfour to get a little wild. That that would work. Balfour, as we mentioned last night, last night's game walked to back to back hitters in the ninth inning, was able to recover. That was a little different situation. That was a 7 0 game when he came in. Almost forced Joe Madden to uh, get the bullpen going. He did force him to get him going. Tonight, a little different story. Three up, three down. 12th inning facing Rosales here to lead off the 13th. And just a piece of that off speed pitch. Still two and two. And your bench. Everybody up on top. They want to see this. All hands on deck for this one. Another 2-2. Two -two. Oh, he's, he's just barely getting a piece of those. Hanging in there, though. Rosales for the year, a 318 average. And 45 at bats, including this one. Broken bat looper out to third baseman Longoria. One gone. Third baseman Adrian Beltray. Well, we talked about uh, how far Daniel Robertson had to go. Here's our Fox Vision to give you a, an exact shot at how far he took off. Well, you thought it might be 40 yards, Buzz. Let's see how close it is. Pretty close. <laughs> Four feet off. You're pretty close <laughs> to exactly what it was. That's what Doug Gassaway used to do when he'd run his kids for a 60 yard dash. If he really liked the kids and he wanted to sell them to the organization, instead of making a 60 yard dash, it'd be like a 57 yard <laughs> dash. So when he timed it, they looked a lot faster. Beltre turns on one and drives it foul down the left side. Adrian down to the count 0 and 2. 116.7. That's 3.3 feet off. Yeah, that's a long way to go. One meter. Plus, he's got the fence to contend with, too. Yeah. The 0 2. Center field. Desmond Jennings has this one under control. 
Two gone. Adrian uh, just getting under that one. Yeah, Daniel Robertson looking up. The base is empty. Robertson, a strikeout in a pinch hitting role for Jim Adusi in the 11th inning. 0 for 1 tonight, 284 the average. And he hits one down the left field line. It's hooking, and it's by the dive of Geyer, and Robertson can run. He is around second, turning the Jets on. Here comes the throw at third, the slide, he's safe. Well, it's a little bit of a gamble with two outs to go for third. But he made it, so it was a good gamble. Generally, you stay at second where you're in scoring position, not take a chance on being thrown out. But he wasn't about to stop. <laughs> he was flying going into second. He was going to keep right on going. And now maybe you get a wild pitch. A lot of different ways you can yeah. score from third base. Rios can be productive. And this is it. 13th inning. The winning run just 90 feet away with two outs. And Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, out there to talk to Balfour and uh, Casale. Make sure they have a plan on how they want to attack Rios or even if they want to attack Alex Rios. Got Robertson at third. Now the pressure is on Gert Casale, the catcher. We've seen uh, Grant Belfort bounce a couple of pitches in his inning and two thirds of work tonight. Well, here we go, the winning run at third base. First pitch is in for strike one. Two ninety four the average for Alex Rios four home runs forty six RBI and he takes outside to even the count. Alex of course uh, hindered by that bad ankle and there's a Texas size rally hat for you a couple youngsters here at eleven thirty whatever time it is good block by the catcher. <laughs> a lot of energy in that dugout, yeah. boy. The Sally just became their least favorite player over there for a pitch. They're the more traditional rally hats. Two balls and a strike with Daniel Robertson at third, Alex Rios at the plate. A 2 2 game in the bottom of the 13th. And a fly ball to center field. Desmond Jennings backing up, makes the catch, and we are going to play some more here at Globe Wide Park. No runs, a hit, one left. On to the 14th, Rangers 2, Rays 2.
Rangers hosting Evan Longoria and the Rays. Longoria, of course, uh, fifth in the American League coming into play tonight with that 321 average. And Longoria, always a thorn in the Rangers' side. Coming back to 2010, it'll be Miles Michaelis for the Rangers tomorrow night and Chris Archer, the right-hander for the race. 7 o'clock, Fox Sports Southwest. Here we go to the 14th. And Scott Baker dealing the uh, first pitch of the inning in and over to Brandon Geyer. Geyer, Longoria, and Loney here in the 14th. And that pitch has popped up. It's going to stay in play. Adam Rosales makes the catch. One gone. Boy, there have been a lot of easy outs in the last few innings. Yes, there have. Not much in the way of a rally. This is thing with the Rangers two out triple for Daniel Robertson. Yeah, that's been it. Yep. Yeah. Rangers have retired what 12 or 13 straight. That's One, 20, two, 12, five. Man, the first pitch to Longoria all the way to the backstop off the glove of Giovanni Soto. Longoria one for five tonight. Four fly balls and a base hit to center. Baker back to the plate. Longoria trying to hit that ball to Grand Prairie and came up a little short. Ramos, the left-hander, going in the uh, bullpen. He is uh, one of two pitchers left down in the bullpen for Joe Madden's club. Good breaking ball from Scott Baker. One and two. Longoria is only a 225 hitter coming into the game on the road this year. One for five in this game. Just able to tick that one foul. Still a ball and two strikes. Baker in his second full inning of work. He is the sixth pitcher used tonight by Ron Washington. Nick Tepish started, went seven innings. Longoria to left center field. Robertson in a hurry over to cut it off, and he does. Longoria going for two. Here comes the throw. It's not in time. Odor couldn't handle the short hop. And Longoria in with a one-out double. Longoria has not hit the ball that hard in the series yet. He lines that ball in the gap. Good try by Daniel. He cut it off, made a strong throw, just was have, would have a hard time making an accurate throw the way he had to field it, wheel, and throw. Mm -hmm. And Longoria was not hesitating. He was going all the way. So the go ahead run out at second now with one out. Here is James Loney, the first baseman. And he first ball swinging, pops it up. Elvis Andrews, shallow left field, makes the catch. That is out number two. A good fastball right there. Scott Baker got the fastball in and up underneath his fists. Just a lazy little pop fly into left field. Well, actually, it was right down the middle of the plate. He just didn't hit it. You know, that makes Loney 0 for 6 tonight. Oh, two gone now. Here's Sean Rodriguez, the designated hitter. Rodriguez one for five with a single. And he drives one to center field, but that's playable. There's Martin back and to his right. Makes the catch, and that will do it. So Scott Baker able to work around the one-out double by Longoria. We'll go to the bottom of the 14th. Martin, Soto, and Odor in a 2-2 game.
exchange uh, for the Tampa Bay Rays. It'll be Cesar Ramos, left-hander, coming in to uh, take over for Joe Madden's club. Well, Ramos, one of three lefties in the bullpen. They've all been used tonight. Bellavo, McGee, and now Ramos. Ramos has had seven starts. Two and four. ERA under four. Pretty good numbers. A lot of one inning or less pitchers throwing more than that tonight. Balfour pitched a couple of innings. McGee a couple of innings. Boxberger one and two thirds. For the Rangers, Neffy, the closer, pitched two innings. Well, the Rangers trying to get a run right here. End this game. And the 14th will begin with Leonis Martin, who has had a career night tonight. Four hits. First time that he has done that in his uh, major league career. And Ramos gets a, a bunt attempt from Leonis. It's fouled back for strike one. Martin, four singles tonight. Had a stolen base in the 11th after he singled with two outs. Also had singles in the second, the fifth, and the seventh. 0-1 pitch coming from Ramos. To left field, not hit very deeply, and uh, Brandon Geyer there to make the grab. That is out number one. That'll bring up Giovanni Soto. Soto, one for five tonight. Had a uh, double in the seventh inning and scored the second Ranger run. That's been the last run scored in this game. Ramos, the 30-year-old from the Los Angeles area. Gets the sign he wants. And Casale and uh, is ready to go. First pitch to Soto. One ball, no strikes. Hey, hey, Ranger fans uh, staying up late with us. We appreciate that. Now, one thing the Rangers have going for them depending on how long this game goes, is they've got a starting pitcher basically in there right now. Yeah. Scott Baker's been, right. You know, he'll pitch for quite a while. Hopefully he won't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Put this game to end before midnight right here. One and one to Soto. And Giovanni looking for his first home run this year. This would be a good time for it. And it's two and one. Ramos okays the sign, and the left-hander comes back to the plate. Three and one. Well, Giovanni trying to get aboard with one out here in the 14th. That Odor, the Rangers' second baseman, will be next. Ramos to Soto. Longoria backing up. It's off his glove. Out of the shallow left field, and Soto is aboard. Oh, well, Longoria, and you don't see that happen very often. He really let that ball play him. Well, he, he knew he had the catcher running, but at the same time, he lays he's playing deep to begin with. He's trying to get a good hop rather than the short hop. He gets a big hop, but had some spin on it. He wasn't able to catch it. So he played it for the safe hop, depending on his arm to make a long throw, but didn't catch the ball. Is that Nick Martinez running at first? Yeah. Yes, it is. Nick Martinez will be the pinch runner at a first base. Be an error on uh, Evan Longoria. So the third error of the game. Both teams now with three miscues. Rugnet Odor at the plate with Martinez at first. 
Nick uh, carrying the winning run, and there's a base hit to right. Martinez will stop at second. He thought about it. He picked up Gary Pettis, but Kiermaier got to the ball quickly. The Rangers, though, have the winning run at second base and just one out for the top of the order. Yeah, Nick actually did a pretty good job of picking up the third base coach. Kiermaier has a strong arm. We've seen him throw out a runner at the plate, even though it wasn't a very long throw. But he does have a strong arm, and with the top of the order coming up, didn't want to risk it right here. He was ready to fire. Odor with his third hit of the night. Rangers now with a dozen base hits. Nick Martinez, the pinch runner, is the winning run out at second base. Shinsu Chu has a double in six trips tonight. First pitch in the dirt. Nice block by Casale. Chu hitting at 243. Remember earlier in the season, Jin Su got off to a start where he was one of the best hitters in the league against left-handed pitching. He has cooled off of late. Little blooper out in the shallow left field going out is the shortstop Zobers. He can't get it. But Martinez had to make sure the ball was going to fall. He stops at third. The Rangers now with a winning run at third and one out. And Elvis Andrews coming up. And you couldn't really tell, not even from up here, right off the bat, how far this ball was going to carry. Chu gets jammed pretty badly. Zoprist is playing in at double play depth, not back anywhere near the grass. And so that little blooper gets over his head. And we load it up. And a pretty good contact hitter at the plate. A guy that really hits well against left-handed pitching. Elvis this year has pounded left-handed pitching about a 340 or 350 average. Last 17 games, he came into the game hitting 344. He's got a couple of hits tonight, so. He's a guy like you like to see up there in this situation. They're going to go with a five man infield. Now they have taken Brandon Geyer out of the ball game. And I believe they're going to bring in Escobar to play a, a shortstop spot. But they're going to have five men on the infield and play with only two outfielders. So Joe Madden, we've seen Joe Madden do this on another occasion. I, I believe it was last year against the Rangers. It seems like it was down in Tampa Bay. The base is loaded and the, the number of holes in the infield is now cut down with the extra infielder in there and that's what you're looking for. You have a much better chance of having a ball hit at an infielder but sit on the ground when you have the extra infielder and it's as simple as that. And with uh, the winning run at third only one out here in the 14th. Tampa Bay now in a pretty tight spot. They got a pretty good shot if you hit a fly ball to left field, that's for sure. They they are not planning on Elvis being able to pull the ball. Anything to the outfield basically is going to get the job done. But you got to have some cooperation from uh, Cesar Ramos. Now here we go. Elvis ready, the first pitch to him. Check swing, it's low for ball one. Elvis looking for something he can elevate right from the get-go. Yeah, Jennings playing fairly deep for these in, under these circumstances in center field. He's definitely not going to throw anybody out from where he is right now. Elvis with three career walk-off hits. Last one almost two years ago, or a little bit more than two years ago. One ball, no strikes. Ramos to the plate. Low one inside, 2-0. Oh. You remember earlier in the year, the Rangers had a walk-off, bases-loaded walk by Shin Su Chu. And Joe Madden saying, wait a minute, I didn't bring an extra infielder in there so you could walk the guy. That wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. 2-0 and oh, the count. Martinez at third, Odor at second, Chu is at first. 
Elvis waiting on Ramos. Sky to right field. This will not be deep enough, I don't think, to score him. Martinez bluffs the move. The throw is cut off. And now the Rangers have two outs. And it's going to take a base hit, a wild pitch, something a little bit different to get the Rangers a win here in the 14th. And now the uh, Rays are going to go back with a normal alignment. Escobar will stay at short, and Zobrist will take over in left field. He's in a perfect situation. He's been swinging the bat well. He's got a 2 0 count. He got a good fastball to hit. Just didn't hit it. Well, Rosales now with an opportunity. Adam 0 for 2 with a walk. Rays go to uh, an overshift with Rosales. They have three players on the left side of the infield. The first pitch is low for ball one. Second baseman Forsythe just on the third base side of second. Escobar, the shortstop, well over in the hole. And, of course, Evan Longoria, the third baseman, back behind the bag. The 1-0 pitch. Outside, two balls and no strikes. So the same count that... Elvis had against Ramos. Yeah, he almost have to take a pitch right here. He's you know, he's having a hard time throwing a strike. I would have said the same thing about Elvis unless you get a great pitch to hit, drive in the winning run, and he got a good pitch to hit. He just didn't hit it. The 2-0 in the dirt ball three. Well, at least one. Yeah, I'd take two. <laughs> he's going to put that finger up again if this is a strike. Well, the crowd now back into it after being deflated a bit on the uh, shallow fly ball for the second out. But they are back on their feet here. Three and oh, the count. Ramos sets. Petro walked back into the dugout and gave his bat back. Ball four. The Rangers win on another bases loaded walk off. Martinez scores the winner. Adam Rosales is mobbed at first. And the Rangers in 14 innings get the W here tonight. How about that? Adam Rosales put his uh, shirt torn from his back after the walk-off, bases-loaded walk, forcing in the winning run. The Rangers win it tonight, 3-2 to two in 14 innings. Well, the other side buzzes. Scott Baker gets himself a win, too. With a couple of scoreless innings. Good job by Scott. First time all year that he's been in a ball game, and the Rangers have won it. That's a nice way to break it. Well, Ramos was struggling to throw a strike to Elvis, 2-0. and oh. He did throw him a strike. Elvis popped it up and then comes back and throws four straight balls and walks in the winning run. Rosales eyeing that all the way into and out of the glove of Casale. So Adam Rosales, who goes from having a uh, two home run game against Chris Sale to a huge bases loaded walk off walk. And he is uh, standing by down on the field with Emily Jones. Thank you very much, Adam. Just the way you guys drew it up. Uh, a walk-off walk in the bottom of the 14th, right? Typical baseball game right there, right? Yeah. Talk about that last at-bat and, and the approach you were taking to the play. Well, I just I knew he was a little nervous out there. It was a big situation in the game. I was really making sure I saw a ball up in the zone. He never really gave him my pitch, obviously, and I knew how to be patient. I saw how he pitched to Elvis a little bit, and I kind of knew he was going to do with me the same way. Just elaborate on the performance of Nick Tepish tonight and the entire pitching staff that came out of the bullpen. Yeah, I mean, we only let up two runs. I mean, in 14 innings, that's pretty outstanding. Nick Tepish, again, did a great job. Bullpen comes in strong, holds for us. 
huge job by them today. And then finally, Adam, obviously it's been a bit of a rough season for this team with some ups and downs. To win a game like this at home has got to be big for you guys. Oh, for sure. You know, the look at the, the fans still sticking yeah. around is awesome. Just huge support for us, and we appreciate that. Adam, congratulations. Thank we appreciate you. it. Adam Rosales with the walk-off walk, guys. We'll send it back up to you. All right, Em, thank you. Yeah, they, they got it done tonight. They turned this into a winner this evening. And John Radigan, Mark McLemore, and Bud Rodriguez will be back to wrap things up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.